And that's one thing that a lot of athletes struggle with either post sport or yeah, during their during. sport when they're mm-hmm. playing is the identity aspect. Cause when someone gets, when, when an athlete gets injured, it's like, what do I do now? You know, there's mm-hmm. no sense of like, shoot, like that sport's taken away from me. Like, mm-hmm. what am I now? And for me, at least it was kind of like during that phase of me not playing, it was, I was kind of slowly looking back now, stripping that identity of just being a college volleyball player away from me. Like I'm not just a volleyball player. Now I'm a writer. Now I'm writing for the school newspaper. Now I'm, I'm the videographer at the school. Like a lot of that's what people knew me by ish because there was like my videos were playing everywhere throughout mm-hmm. the throughout campus. So that happened. And um, I started like making a name for myself, kind of not branding, but started making, you know, that's building my resume, I guess, of things that I can do. And um, when COVID hit, that's kind of when the decline of, just volleyball went for me in terms of like I started not losing my passion for it but I started like losing that sense of why am I even playing anymore you know um when COVID hit I think COVID really like made me question a lot of things and it really just like shook me up I guess I guess for people trust trust your intuition obviously we have like that Mm self-talk um sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad but also if, if that feeling is like like don't discount that feeling because I remember it's actually going back to like my first semester of college, my best friend and I, um, she was also my teammate. Um, her and I were both in that same state where we were like, like, yeah, we had the best freshman year. Like we had the best season, but both of us, we both had like those talks of like, why are we here? You know, but we would yeah. always like push it aside and be like, no, it's fine. like, no, we're going to make the most out of the situation. Like, no, it's fine. Like, we're just going to go through this year, blah, blah, blah. But that was kind of like a planted seed within us. Of yeah. like that talk, we had that throughout the whole semester, throughout the whole season. And although we had each other and it was fun, it was great. We still had those talks of like, do we, should we transfer? Like, why are we here? Like, we're not even having fun here, blah, 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 blah. We are live. <laughs> we are live, y'all. <laughs> what is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Gava Cloud podcast, where we share healthy conversations, apply knowledge, experiences, and stories to promote promote happiness, love, success. You guys already know who I am. My name is Will. I'm the host of this show. If you guys are watching this and tuning in for the very first time, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Uh, Please show some love and support. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Show some love. Everybody out there that has been watching, been supporting, sending me Sending me so much positive feedback and subscribing. Thank you so much for all the love support. Really means a lot to me. Keeps the inspiration. Keeps the fire going. But I'm, exci- I'm excited today, y'all. I'm excited today, y'all. I have a very special <laughs> guest. Whoa! Very special <laughs> guest today. One of our Tahitian, uh, Melanesian. I'm sorry. Melanesian. Micronesian. Oh, I'm sorry. Micronesian. My bad. My bad. <laughs> My bad. Uh, Micronesian. We have one of our Micronesian sisters all the way from the San Jose in the Bay Area, yay! You already know the vibes out there. You know the uh, vibes. She is a staff writer, <laughs> staff writer uh, for Island City Media Group, and she is an ambassador of Buck Up Supplements. So I'm going to have her IG on the bottom of this page. Check her out. Go follow her IG, uh, Lonnie, 20%, tw- Lonnie 20 for 20% off. All right, so I just want to say directly to her, thank you so much for taking the time to join me on my podcast and be here today to share stories and have a chance for you guys to listen to her and get to know her and her story and her journey in life. So, uh, but I'll allow her to introduce herself real quick. So it's all you. Perfect. Hi, um, I'm Kehlani Mayo. I am Micronesian. I'm half Filipino and half Chamorro. And I'm 19 and I'm from San Jose, California. So NorCal. <laughs> <laughs> NorCal, baby. Um, you already know. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. For, uh, thank you so much. I'm excited to have you join us on the, on, on this podcast. So uh, let's get it started. So I know a lot of people, uh, my audience, they don't know who you are. So can, can you give a quick, a quick synopsis of your story, background, and how did you grow up? Okay. Well, um, I grew up in, um, you know, the Bay Area. Uh, I have an older sister, two younger brothers, a nephew, mom and dad, grew up in a Christian household, um, very, very tight-knit family. Um, I was 
I grew up playing sports. That was basically my whole life. And it's still kind of part of who I am today. Mm -hmm. um, the big thing about me is faith, family, and um, that's basically it. But do I just mm -hmm. get right into my story? Or Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Just go. I just go right keep, in? Keep it okay. going. Keep it moving. <laughs> okay, well, growing up, um, I guess one of the big things was just like, um, I was always a daddy's girl. So like, yeah. I was always next to my dad with everything. And in some way, I'm like the second oldest. So it's my sister and then me, he kind of like treated me as like a son. Because then I had two other brothers right after me. Um, but I did all the like, male things, if you want to with him, I was like, yeah, I went to all his football games whenever he coached, I was he always trained me like we have a gym downstairs. And literally from I don't know from when uh, we would always like work out together. Um, but with that, like I grew up more so with like a lot of guys mm -hmm. and um, which was kind of like not hard, but um, with like, I guess with the girlfriend groups and stuff, like that was like yeah. really hard for me to have like a lot of girlfriends. Um, cause I was always training with football boys, basketball boys. Oh, like my brother's yeah. friends were all my friends. Um, so that's like one thing growing up as, um, young girl, I was also, I did all the not guy sports like that's you know were you, were you like a tomboy growing up big tomboy growing up <laughs> literally I, <laughs> sweatpants <laughs> shorts I oh the photos <laughs> but I like I'm a, okay like I'm a black belt in taekwondo and I like I wrestled in middle school oh like, wow yeah you're I, like the next you know? level tomboy <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like I was literally raised with boys and um I get just all throughout middle school and like high school never really like had like girlfriends or yeah. had that like those group of girls and whatnot mm -hmm. but um but I like I said a big part of my life was sports and that's something like I kind of want to share because like literally my whole like testimony in my life was um like you know like, through my recruiting process all throughout high school I, you know like I was like I said I was a daddy's girl so my dad yeah. played football in college so I wanted to follow his footsteps and play volleyball yeah. in college and that's why he was like so strict on me all throughout high school I didn't do yeah. anything I wasn't partying I wasn't doing anything I was just work out school yeah. kept to that, myself that, the athlete life that, you know the athlete life you already yeah. know like just, yeah, I already know <laughs> discipline focus whatnot <laughs> so but all throughout high school just um you know, just on the grind and whatnot. Um, and I guess like what I want to like say to all the girls out there and all the guys too, um, the recruiting process, like with sports, I think a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah. Um, a it's lot tough. of athletes. It's, tough. it's really it's tough. tough. Yeah, it's really tough. And a lot of people want to play in college, which is like an amazing dream. And at the same time, no, like no, no, just sorry, but a lot of people want to play D1 college. A lot of that's exactly. No, no, no college, not college. A no. lot of athletes want to play D1 D1. D1. Yes. Nothing, le nothing less. Go ahead. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Keep going. Keep nothing going. Oh, this is good. Now you're, I feel like you know. <laughs> I know. I know. Exactly. I, I know. I know. Oh, I know. you know, because I'm already, this is where I'm going. <laughs> so a lot of that, Um, that was like me. I, my dad uh, and, played. I'm sorry to ask you, but what, what college your dad went to? He played Division II football um, at okay, San cool. Francisco State back gotcha, when gotcha. they did have a program. Um, And when he was there, he... Like, the program got shut down. Um, but um, that was like my dream. I wanted to play division one volleyball. It was like the hype. That's all you see on yeah. TV. You know, that's like did you have, all did you have a Did you have a college he wanted you to go to? Like that was his dream? No, his his for me was just like get a scholarship or just get money okay. somehow, play gotcha. somewhere, you know, like this is your journey. So he was very encouraging with that. Okay. Um, but also just like, it's more so like a pride thing, you know, yeah. like the yeah. big thing is just the pride. And I also went to high school where they were breeding D1 athletes yeah. and everyone around me was, and I played for a really good um, club team as well. And like girls everywhere were just getting recruited yeah. D1, you know, the whole shebang and like the high school that I went to, I played with like national ranked girls. Yeah. and girl, like we went like my sophomore year we went to state and right so everyone was like offered up but yeah. um I guess uh like for me and my journey with that 
was I didn't know where I was going and I was I play volleyball right so like as a defensive specialist which is like the last person to get recruited you're either recruited in the very beginning or you're recruited last and you don't get money so yeah. knowing that um I was kind of like going through a thing of no like I I had to play D1 like I have to it's like a pro, yeah. you know like yeah everyone like all my best friend um he was getting offered everywhere and I feel like yeah. that's where it gets toxic because you see it all over social media everyone's posting their offers and whatnot yeah. and that gets discouraging but I remember um go like going into my senior year I was talking to schools I was talking to a lot of colleges um from like you know d3 to like d1 but d1 was also like I'm gonna be a walk-on like a recruited walk-on yeah yeah um so I didn't get like the scholarship but I would you know be on the team and this was also kind of like my junior to senior year that's kind of when I got more real in my faith and mm-hmm. when I had to learn to like trust in God and like trust the process of everything. Yeah. Um, but he, I remember being like so broken, um, like the summer of my junior year to like my yeah. senior year and just being like, God, like everyone around me is literally like getting offered. Like, when is it going to be my time? Like how come um, girls that I've played with, like, you know, that I'm, I think are, that I'm the same level at how come they're like getting offered, but I'm not and whatnot. Yeah. But there is this one school um, called Westmont College. It's in Santa Barbara. It like checked off all the boxes, except for the fact that it was an NAI small school in Santa Barbara. Yeah. And I wanted like the big school. I wanted the football team. I wanted the whole thing, like, you know, like the power five, but no. Things yeah, for everybody, for everybody <laughs> that's, that's watching this, they may not know what NAI means can you, can you explain um, it and AI, it's basically like just another uh collegiate organization i yeah for lack of yeah. words um yeah. but it's more geared towards like it's, it's just smaller schools um it's, in some cases yeah like yeah. it would be comparable some at some level um like the school that i was at it would be comparable to a division two school yeah um so that's just but, just just, just yeah yeah just I, wanted, yeah I just want to put it in like in real terms for, for a lot of people and the way athletes see it NAI mm-hmm. is like the lowest out of all the schools as far as competition yeah. level mm-hmm. you know yeah so I'm not saying the quality of schools isn't great I'm just saying as far as competition level the way they mm-hmm. rank it in sports is D1 D2 D3 mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. NAI yeah. yeah so for a lot of athletes yeah. coming to high school they don't like to go to NIA is something like it's like the lowest mm-hmm. In, so in their in, in their mind in their mind right mm-hmm. in our because yeah. as an athlete because we want to go out there and compete in the best level mm-hmm. yeah exactly it's oh this is so good um yeah no <laughs> definitely is uh that's definitely what a lot of people think and that's definitely what yeah. I thought too going into it um uh but uh but my senior year I was I started to realize like okay if I'm going to go to a D1 school, it's like for my position as a defensive specialist, I'm not going to get money. Like I'm not yeah. going to be a walk on at any school mm-hmm. just because it's late in the recruiting process. So like I was talking to my parents, I was like, why not just go to a school that I know will benefit me like mm-hmm. in all aspects, spiritually, you know, volleyball wise, um, and just every area of my life that I know, um, like academically that will impact me. So as I was like, um, like doing my, as I was getting recruited and I was talking to different coaches and colleges, uh, Westmont College was one of the choices. And um, that's the NAIA NAIA school in Santa Barbara. And I remember I went, they asked me to come to their camp. I went, automatically fell in love with it. And um, the the coaches um, to the location, it was faith-based. So that was really, really big for me. I really wanted a faith-based school. Um, but I know that like, this is where kind of like, I kind of stopped thinking D1 or something big because I already know like spiritually, I, it wasn't going to fulfill me or I would get not necessarily tempted because I was like still disciplined, but at the same time, it would, that's a big option there. Mm-hmm. If you go to like one of those big schools and, um, so but when I went to Westmont and I visited I was like whoa like it just felt right you know I just felt mm-hmm. you know when people say like 
well, like, this is a school. That's how I felt um, when I visited and when I went to the camp and whatnot. But a um, couple, I guess, a couple months later, uh, they offered me, it was like my first offer. I was like, ah, yay. Um, and I ended up committing because I fell in love with the school. But my senior year, this is what, like the, not the biggest test, but it was like a, a good test of um, being humble and yeah. just humbling myself, losing the pride, not caring what other people think. Um, Cause like they, I said, we had- when, they, when they offered you, did they, did you say, did you tell anybody? immediately when they offered you um I mean my family <laughs> immediately I yeah, was like but no, oh my god they just friends? offered me my friends I kind of like told them slowly um yeah like I told my teammates for sure because it was definitely it was during volleyball season mm -hmm. so the very beginning of the school year and I told them I told my coaches like people that were really close to me um it, but that was I ended up like yeah falling out like the but, next but, couple of games but, but, but what I ask you but what I ask you like because this happens a lot. What was the reason why you told him slowly? Like, um, it was just like, I, I guess for me, I don't really like the attention like that. I don't like when people yeah. you know, are blasting me like that, or um, you don't feel don't like know, you, and also just, there was there wasn't a part of you that you just felt like it's not up to like the one. Was, no, think think that about too. it. That too. That yeah. too. Yes, that too. Because people, a lot of people, are like, what's that? What yeah. like? I never heard of that school, and especially because my class, um, my class of 2019 in high mm -hmm. school, I would say I was probably one of the biggest recruiting classes yeah. um, in all sports. Like I think the first signing period, we, they had like 15 D1 signees or something. Yeah, in one class, and, right? In one class, and this is the first signing period. So something along those lines. I know it's like yeah. double digits, but I was like, whoa. For a lot and, of people out there, just, um, a lot of people out there just put in perspective, most schools that have one D1 or two D1 signings mm -hmm. to have 15. Yeah. That's like, that's a, that's yeah. a high quality class right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if, if it wasn't 15, it was definitely like double digits of like D1 and then maybe a couple like D2 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that was, yeah. So I ended up committing and then the first signing period, um, this one, this, I'm only sharing this because I want to like encourage other people to one thing openly and do what's best for you and not for other people. Yeah. Um, and to like not really care about what other people think about one the school you're going to or just you in general. And um, I remember the first signing period, the first signing period is always for like the first commits. You commit early, you mm -hmm. know, that's your, that's your day. And NAIA <clears throat> rules are different, but I was able to sign beforehand. So I was already committed by like October, like officially yeah. signed and sealed by October. Yeah. And the first signing period is usually in November. And um, so November, it happens. I go to the AD, right? Like they email all of the commits and be like, hey, like it's signing period, blah, blah, blah. Make sure you have like your signing papers and whatnot. And I remember like the day happens and I go up to like the athletic department, the athletic office, and I like hand them like my papers. And they like look at me and they're like, this isn't a national letter of intent. I'm like a national letter of intent is basically yeah. like that is you signing. Like, yeah, that is your commitment. And I was like, and this is me. I'm like dressed out in like my shirt and like my hat. I'm like, what? I was like, what? Like, this is like, I literally signed this already. This is just like a, you know, a duplicate that my coach gave me. And they looked at me like, oh, that's like, we usually do people like in your situation, like in the spring. And I was like, what? Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, so taken aback. And I was like, okay, kind of like just left it there. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm not signing. But then I remember like the next period, like right after that, I was like, I'm not tripping, right? Like, yeah, yeah. this is actually like a letter of intent. I showed my dad, so my dad signed. And like all of his buddies who have signed um, and played like football in college, they're like, no, that's a letter of intent. And it literally says letter of intent on the bottom of yeah. your page. And I was like, so confused and it's literally because I wasn't um a d1 or d2 signee yeah in that case so that really was just like one of the first cases of me being like whoa like okay yeah. like if people actually look at this school which is one of the most academically rigorous schools yeah. but also like sports wise just to you know put it out there like <clears throat> we have and at that school there were like 
um, Major League Baseball guys that came out of Westmont, or yeah. there were multiple national championships in at in every um, like sport uh, for that for Westmont College. So it was kind of yeah. like, oh whoa, and it was also a feeder school to my school. Yeah. Um, so I was like really confused. I was like, wow, dang. That's kind of like my first sense of like, not discrimination, but you know, like, yeah. you know, like they're really like discriminating me against like the school that I'm going to because I'm not a D1 or D2 signee. Yeah. Um, and then, and then February comes the second sign period. Didn't, I wasn't able to sign yet. Third period comes, which is like the spring signing. And this is where like kind of like the last commits or whatever end up signing. And I was able to finally sign on the stage or whatever. And I was kind of like a blessing in disguise because I ended up sharing the story of not that whole thing, but just being Mm -hmm. like going up there and being like, hey, like, and that whole year too was just kind of um, me going through those emotions of like, wow, people really look at me this way or people really like, and or just constant, um, everyone always asked me like, Oh, what school do you go to? And I was like, oh, I'm going to Westmont College, and they're like, what's that? Yeah. Like, oh, for for a lot of right? for a lot of people, they don't see NAIA as like a real program mm-hmm. or real athlete or yeah. real 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 sports. Mm-hmm. And that, exactly. that's that's a sad that's a sad truth out there. Yeah, it's a sad truth, and there are different levels in the sports yeah. world. Obviously, like yeah. don't get me wrong, I'm not going to say like you know Stanford and yeah, like Westmont yeah, yeah, yeah. here, but yeah. like at the end of the day, what are you going to school for? You know, yeah. and that's what's something that I always had to like ask myself. I'm not picking a school because they have the best colors or they, um, you know, I'm not just going to a school just to say that I went to that school. I'm going to a school because when it's faith based, so it's going to fill me spiritually. Like I know I'm going to be spiritually challenged in some way or it's going to encourage me spiritually. Number two, it's still um, a really good volleyball school. They went to like, nationals the year before and competed and then um what else like academically one of the most academically rigorous like people used to call it like the harvard of christian colleges um but nobody knew that side which Mm -hmm. is like the hard part so it's kind of like that whole year i was going through um that like one like okay don't worry about what other people are saying um like you know where you're why you're going like what's your why like why are you going to that specific school um and whatnot but that's like a lot of things that a lot of athletes kind of like get stuck in is just the hype of d1 and that's what i shared in my signing speech and i was like hey like to all the other athletes out there um don't get caught up in the d1 hype like yeah there's so many other schools out there that are curated for you Mm -hmm. and i know so many people who have like transferred not saying d1's bad or like any, any level is bad, Yeah. but it's like, what are, like, what's going to fit you at the end of the day? You know, like a lot of people asked, um, whenever I was going through my recruiting process, a lot of coaches asked, like, you need to go to a school that if you weren't able to play your sport, would you still enjoy it? Right. And that's when, like, throughout the whole process, I was kind of going through too. It's like, if I didn't have volleyball in my life, like, would I still enjoy that school? And Westmont was was that for me <clears throat> but I guess I'm just like sharing that because a lot of you know people kind of get s- stuck in that headspace and um which is a bit great goal and a big dream and it's definitely so attainable but it's also like know what's best for you and know yeah. what you need and what you want mm-hmm. and not just do it because other people are saying to do it or because that's all you see on social media and um and whatnot but so that was like high school and now we get to college and this is my freshman year of college which is crazy because I say all of this all that process and God like looking at me now God has like yeah. changed my life around again <laughs> yeah, yeah, before before you before you go into your college story um mm-hmm. I do want I do want to talk about the reality of like so uh of of the high school or the college, college level Right? Because sometimes a lot of people see it as schools, but in reality, and a lot of kids don't realize that these schools are, uh, are businesses, right? Mm-hmm. It's a business. <laughs> you know, it's, it's actually a business. So, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, why? But that's the main question, like, you know, why don't, uh, why, w- why don't, um, excuse me, 
why don't most schools don't want to, you know, uh, have different signing classes, right? Because at the end of the day, like, people don't realize there's a lot of money in sports. There's a lot of money. It's all about reputation. You know, most schools, like, they want to attract more athletes. And they want to produce as many D1 athletes as they can. So for it's like it's, it's, a, it's the best interest of the school to make sure that they put more all the spotlight of the D1 athletes because it's going to attract more kids to come to their school. Because it's yeah. a business at the end of the day. A lot of kids don't realize this. And I feel like that the mis, the, uh, the mistake, I guess the, the problem nowadays is really finding coaches nowadays that cares more about the athlete than, uh, than the school, right? Because, yeah. uh, because at the end of the day, you know, coaches, you know, they make money based on uh, how, how good that the program does and how good the athletes are. You know, if you're a school that have the most and you know, have better athletes, you know, you're going to do it. You get to perform better. You get more wins, more championships, mm-hmm. more money comes in, more money for the school, more yeah. money for the coaches. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's, it's, you know, it's really sometimes, you know, I'm not saying all coaches, but it's really rare. You find some coaches that really has the, the best interest of, of, like you said, of the athlete itself. Yeah. And while a lot of kids need to realize if you're watching this and in, 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 in your high school, you need to understand that the most important thing is just having an opportunity. Mm-hmm. It's not a, you know, like, like you should know, you know, if you have, look, if you have opportunity, if you're a great D1 player and you have the opportunity to go D1, go, you should all, in life, you should always take advantage of every opportunity, mm-hmm. regardless of what yeah. it is. Like, and that's something, I, that's one of the life lessons I've learned in my life. And I, I learned from my mentors, my coaches, mm-hmm. people that inspire me, people that have mentored me. They always say, hey, take advantage of every opportunity, regardless of what yep. it is. Because it's yeah. just a starting, it's just a starting point to get where mm-hmm. you want to be. If your if your goal is exactly. to graduate college, if your goal is to make it to NFL or make it to a professional, it doesn't matter what your goal is, but you just need an opportunity to get in there. Mm-hmm. So you don't mm-hmm. devalue yourself, don't devalue your potential, your ability, your confidence. Mm-hmm. Don't devalue yourself because you weren't given the same opportunity as somebody else. Because yeah. there's so many times you see where, yeah, you there's some, like there's like thousands of stories you see athletes that went to a small school and they mm-hmm. became great later on big yep. how, many, how many times have you seen great athletes that went to great schools in the beginning but they fell off later off later off mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. like going like whatever school you go into that's not a guarantee for mm-hmm. the final destination whatever you want to, whatever you're trying to achieve for your life yeah. but all you need is an opportunity whether it was an NAI school a lot of people don't know this go to JUCO <laughs> junior mm-hmm. college right exactly there's, yeah I'm, there, I'm, i always tell a lot of i have like your younger siblings younger people i always tell there's so many opportunities out there to go to juco to go to uh nai school to go to d2 d3 but because mm-hmm. like, we have the you know this uh this uh this culture of uh, you have to make mm-hmm. a d1 mm-hmm. right this reality and of course i understand because we always as people we want to be at the best we always want to perform at the highest yeah. level i understand it but you just need to understand that the most important thing is just having an opportunity and whoever mm-hmm. gives you the opportunity, be humble and take mm-hmm. it because having yeah. an opportunity is better than no opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Exactly. So, That's so good. Yeah. So I just want to, I just wanted to say that. And um, mm-hmm. like I said, just like you said, I just want to, you know, express a double down on what you said, like, you know, uh, do what's best for you and mm-hmm. don't worry about what everybody else says. Uh, pay attention to who you listen to, especially coaches, because like mm-hmm. I said, you know, sometimes the coaches, all they care about is, what can they, what can you do for them instead of like, what, what can you do for yourself to give you the best opportunity, best path? So, and uh, like, like mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, I wish we had this, like we, should, we need more of these like type of conversations because yeah. it's, it's, the reality is this happens every single time, every, every class. Yeah. There's always somebody yeah. out there that didn't get attention and, uh, mm-hmm. and they feel like that their life is over because they, they weren't given an opportunity. And for some people, they give up easily, right? They give up on it. Mm-hmm. And then later on in life, they regret. Because I have friends right now, they regret. They never took advantage of yeah. it. Yeah. Because they, they, yeah. They, didn't, they didn't make the you want, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it's just also, um, like, everyone, like, just know, like, everyone's journey, everyone's paths is, are so different. Just because yeah. someone who, who grew up probably, you know, around the same area as you or, you know, had the same, I don't know, upbringing. Yeah. That can totally change, you know? Like, I... I always like tell people never compare yourself to other people's journeys, you know, like keep, yep, like yep. stay focused on you, which is something that I also have learned throughout that whole process as well. Like throughout my recruiting process and just high school and college is don't compare just because someone's doing one thing doesn't mean like God can't do another thing for you, you know, and it's just like stay focused on your journey, your path, because you never know where 
what's next or where he's going to take you and like just never compare especially like the different levels yeah. and whatnot because ultimately yeah. you're doing the same thing or you know everyone's going to the same direction <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly but but yeah so that that was you know from high school up to college mm-hmm. and then college happens um and it was an amazing experience um my freshman year of college uh i'm grateful that i had the opportunity to experience a good amount of a normal regular college Mm -hmm. um like a freshman year um but which is yeah volleyball wise amazing um we went all the way to NAIA nationals. Mm-hmm. We finished number two in the nation. Mm-hmm. Like we, so in that aspect, like you know, the year before, I was literally yeah. like, like what people were kind of like, seg- you know, not second guessing me, but yeah, what's my smile? Like what is that? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. But yeah. then the year after, I'm literally like on ESPN three you know <laughs> yeah yeah um on the national championship and just I'm like I've never I've never experienced that before mm-hmm. but I'm not saying it's you know it's like recognition it's just more so you just never know right yeah. and you it just once you get out of that headspace of oh but you know like being on tv every week playing d1 yeah. or getting the hype of yeah. it but you know um the year after uh my team and I we ended up going to nationals finishing number two in the nation blah blah, blah. um but also co- like co- playing a sport in college at any level is it's going to be challenging yeah <laughs> so I guess whoever does end up watching this who does want to play in college or is in college um playing a sport I guess they can relate on this level of it's not always easy there is I didn't get to play my freshman year of college. And this is just another test of, you know, being humble and like, you know, stripping down your pride and just making the most out of every situation. I was like the only freshman not playing um, last year, only because like every all, everyone else was just filling in um, spots that have already left. And um, I was just reminded constantly of like, why am I here? Why am I here? You know, volleyball is literally like, you know, that got me here to this school. And but I, I just remember so many times I was literally crying after a practice or there was just one time, um, like just because of money, money reasons, um, we didn't have a lot of money for like travel. So it was me and this other, like it was a red shirt who stayed back, but my whole team left yeah. for a game. Yeah, that right? must and be that tough. happened. That must be tough. And it was so tough yeah. because everyone was coming up to me and be like, why aren't you there? Cause I wasn't hurt yeah, or injured. Yeah. It was just literally lack of money. And I was literally like, um, I'm just not there. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. We don't have money, but, or there was just one person that would come up to me after every single game. Like I said, I was, I was the only freshman not playing, but that's not, that's not, nor- that's not normal. Not, I mean, no, that is normal for freshmen not to automatically always play, especially when you have like so many other people in the same position as you playing. Um, but there was this one person I remember she would always come up to me after every game. She was like, Did you play today? I'm like, No, <laughs> I didn't play last. I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> but after every single game, and I'm just like, you know, like God, when is it my time? You know, yeah, <laughs> like when is yeah. it gonna be my time? Like I'm doing the extra. I'm you know, work after practices, I would either work out beforehand or after just to get some more work in and whatnot. And it's not like I wasn't doing not the right things it was just more it's not my time you know yeah and but that just gets to you like everyone when everyone left for that one game everyone came up to me I was like why aren't you playing like or yeah. why aren't you why aren't you in Arizona and I'm like I, yeah uh, you know I got nothing to say um so that definitely took a toll and I remember when that whole thing happened I like, called my dad I was like I feel like so frustrated I'm so mad like like, why is this happening? Yeah. You know, I thought like everyone was going to travel or blah, 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 but it was actually in those times of like me not playing or that I found like my different passions because volleyball was literally all I ever knew. Working out was all I ever knew. Training, growing up, all I ever knew. But, and I, I came into college wanting to become um, a physical therapist or not physical therapist, 
yeah, physical therapist, athletic trainer, kinesiology mm-hmm. along those lines. Um, but I changed that major real quick. <laughs> I was like, that's not me. Yeah. And I switched to communications. And um, like I said, I wasn't, you know, as not I wasn't playing a lot on the team so God really kind of like shifted my focus into other areas and it made me realize what do I want to do in my life and also and also the the reason why you know you're watching this the reason why it makes it so tough and you know this right uh you know if you're athlete you already know this you know if you don't play the perception is from from people they means that you suck (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. that's yep. that's what yeah and that and, and, and that's and that's why it's really really tough you know uh because that's what people mm-hmm. think that's like like that's why if, you, if mm-hmm. you're not playing if you're on the bench you're not as good as everybody else mm-hmm. so that's uh yeah. anybody so that's why that's why it just makes it even worse because like you know as as an athlete you, any athlete if you're an athlete and playing in some kind of d1 comp, uh not d1 but any kind of collegiate competition you have we all have like pride and we all have that fire and like, we all mm-hmm. want to compete mm-hmm. Right. And it's really, yeah. really hard for any any athlete. Doesn't matter if you're in the collegiate level, high school level, even the pro level, you know, mm-hmm. like if you're not playing, right? Then the, of course that's like the that's like the general consensus of, of, the, of all the friends of the people. Mm-hmm. They just think you're not good enough. And that really, really weighs yeah. heavy on the athlete because naturally yeah. you want to compete. You want to go out there and mm-hmm. improve. But like I said, mm-hmm. it is what it is. You can't play. And you know, there's mm-hmm. things you can't control. But that's why it just it just it's really, really tough. A lot of people don't understand that, that pressure. Mm-hmm. like we want to yeah. play no that's it's real not, it's, it's not like we don't want to be out there it's not like we mm-hmm. don't want to be out there we don't want to play it's just it is what you know it, it is what it is but i'm just saying mm-hmm. is people don't understand that 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 mm-hmm. pressure that we feel when we because we know mm-hmm. that's what people are thinking they may not say it they may not say yeah, it but that, it's just <laughs> and, and they might even say it or think yeah, it but that's what we yeah, think that, in our heads yeah, too. yeah it's like you know that's like, like that girl that says like you know why didn't you play today you know, mm-hmm. I think her mind, she already, you know, <laughs> it's like, I, yeah, I'm like, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if she's saying that as, as, as like being uh, disingenuous. I don't know if she's saying that as like sarca- sarcasm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But, you know, that's what I've, yeah. I've had. I've, had, I've seen that. I've, that happened to me before. People like say it's sarcastic. Well, why did you play today? You're like, oh, you, you can feel it. You can feel that. Yeah. That yeah. sarcasm or that, and that was- negative, negative energy or vibe. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, OK. It's all good. Yeah. 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 yeah so I know that, that yeah no I get that yeah. especially for like athletes that does does get like heavy but yeah like it, it's like we said it's like always it's, it starts with the mind you know like yeah. just not paying attention to that yeah or whatever yeah. like focus on you blah, blah blah stay in your lane but um but with that though like me not like playing that or just me you know not so focused on volleyball mm-hmm. it showed me other areas in my life that, that I kind of like that open that open doors for me i guess um like what happened like this is the first this is my first semester at college um i ended up writing for the school newspaper and because i like love to write so that was just one thing that i started to get into and then um uh, not only that i started making videos so i started making videos for the college for all the sports teams i started making videos for like sports highlights sports reels stuff like that like hype videos um, and I was kind of doing that like under the table, like kind of just like emailing coaches, like, hey, like if you yeah. I, I make videos, like if you want one, I do it for like my team. And that was that's kind of where I found my 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 lane, my not purpose on my team. Um, but like I was maximizing just the opportunity of being on a collegiate team. And with that, I was making sure I was not, you know, sad on the bench. I was like hyping everyone up, making mm-hmm. sure like everyone was literally like hyped um and if I wasn't doing that then I had someone else take videos of my team and I would edit them and I ended up that ended up being coming a job there at my school that was that never happened before um all they had was just like people taking photos but they never had you know when people like search up schools and they're like oh like I don't know university something college hype videos for a specific sport we didn't have that at my school. So I was like, dude, why not? Like, that's so lit. Yeah. Like, why can't we do that? <laughs> so I started doing that and that became a job on campus. And so it was kind of in a way, just because one area of my life wasn't at a hundred, there was little like opportunities um, for me that I made a way that made, that I, that I kind of did, that I pursued, like writing for the school newspaper. And I got paid for that. Um, and making sports videos for all the other 
teens. And, um, and in a way that was kind of the start of God kind of just like stripping that volleyball identity from me. And that's one thing that a lot of athletes struggle with either post sport or yeah, during the sport when they're mm-hmm. playing is the identity aspect. Cause when someone gets, when, when an athlete gets injured, it's like, what do I do now? You know, there's mm-hmm. no sense of like, shoot, like that sport's taken away from me. Like, mm-hmm. when am I now? And for me, at least it was kind of like during that phase of me not playing, it was, I was kind of slowly looking back now, stripping that identity of just being a college volleyball player away from me. Like, I'm not just a volleyball player. Now I'm a writer. Now I'm writing for the school newspaper. Now I'm, I'm the videographer at the school. Like a lot of that's what people knew me by ish because there was like my videos were playing everywhere throughout mm-hmm. the throughout campus. So that happened and um, I started like making a name for myself, kind of not branding, but started making, you know, that's building my resume, I guess, of things that I can do. And um, when COVID hit, that's kind of when the decline of just volleyball went for me in terms of like, I started not losing my passion for it, but I started like losing that sense of why am I even playing anymore, you know? um when COVID hit I think COVID really like made me question a lot of things and it really just like shook me up I guess and yeah, can I you, remember like this can you, can you, can you talk yeah. about that, that that transition because I feel like that's very important uh for every athlete when you mm-hmm. find it because when you finally realize okay um you, you feel like that 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 uh, you, you're no longer passionate about playing no more and mm-hmm. and it's really really that's hard so real. because you're because you're a competitor right in in essence mm-hmm. So you, yeah. So a lot of athletes, they feel like, especially because when you're an athlete, all your friends are athletes. You know, our, our mm-hmm. self worth and values mm-hmm. based on who we are. Uh, that's just real life. Like mm-hmm. our self and values are determined by the friends that we surround ourselves with. So um, mm-hmm. when you start questioning your own ability, when you start questioning your own identity as an athlete, sometimes like we feel like that we're not good enough, or we're not like you know because you're not because you know if you, if you go to your friends and tell you know I don't want to play football, I don't want to play volleyball no more, I don't. You know, mm-hmm. they're not going to take it well, right? Mm-hmm. They're going to look at you different. So this this is a conversation you have within yourself and you keep it to yourself. Yeah, yeah. Right? And it's, yeah. it's really hard. You can't really just go to your coaches and, and your, your friends and be like, hey, you know what? I don't want to do this no more. Oh, you know what? Um, mm-hmm. This is not for me. You can't have that conversation with your friends. Mm-hmm. So this, so it's a really mm-hmm. hard conversation. So can you talk about that when that started yeah. happening? Because I feel like this is something that happens a lot, but many people don't really talk about it or don't, don't know how to address it when it happens mm-hmm. and what I say to everybody, when you start having that conversation, you got to let that, let it embrace it. Don't fight it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, no, go, go ahead. Cause that's no, that's real. I mean, I feel one thing, like, I guess for people trust, trust your intuition. Obviously we have like that self-talk. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad, but also if, if that feeling is like, like don't discount that feeling because I remember, it's actually going back to like my first semester of college, my best friend and I, um, she was also my teammate. Um, her and I were both in that same state where we were like, like, yeah, we had the best freshman year. Like we had the best season, but both of us, we both had like those talks of like, why are we here? You know, but we would yeah. always like push it aside and be like, no, it's fine. like, no, we're going to make the most out of the situation. Like, no, it's fine. Like we're just going to go through this year, blah, blah, blah. But that was kind of like a planted seed within us of yeah. like that talk. We had that throughout the whole semester, throughout the whole season. And although we had each other and it was fun, it was great. We still had those talks of like, do we, should we transfer? Like, why are we here? Like, we're not even having fun here, blah, 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 blah. Also, I want to add to yeah. this, um, and let me know if this is true. When you start doubting yourself, right, as, as an athlete, it also mm-hmm. affects your performance. Mm-hmm. right yeah because like you said yeah. sports anything any competition just it's a mindset so like naturally mm-hmm. if, if you know that you're not passionate about something naturally like you're mm-hmm. not going to be passionate or going out there and putting your best effort not because you're not putting in mm-hmm. for best effort because there's a shift within you right mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. the thing but of course when it comes to uh athletes if you don't perform well there's always pressure for, and criticism mm-hmm. from your coaches so yeah. a lot of times and i've seen this has happened to me i've seen a lot of people where uh, I, I know based on my conversation with them that they, they're not, their heart's no longer in it, but they won't say it, right? But they won't tell mm-hmm. nobody, right? Mm-hmm. The performance starts to decline, mm-hmm. 
And now everybody mm-hmm. in the team starts like criticizing them. Everybody, the coaches are criticizing. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, you're not, you're, mm-hmm. you suck. You're not good enough. Yeah. But but they don't know yeah. that the, the, they're they're not choosing to suck. They just the heart is no mm-hmm. longer in there no more because they are they're mm-hmm. transitioning slowly. But that but they will never tell that to anybody because it's hard to do that as yeah. an athlete. And mm-hmm. like everybody's like judged because we get judged based on our performance. That's just that's that's the reality. Yeah. And also yeah. we get treated. This is tra- This is facts. We get treated based on our that's- performance. Low key, high key, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the way we get treated yeah. as athletes, if you're an athlete, you know this. The way we get treated as an athlete is based on how you perform. And if you perform well, you get all the recognition, attention, attention from your coaches, all the love. If you don't perform well, you're, you're on the bottom tier. Nobody honestly mm-hmm. gives you that. Mm-hmm. Like they treat you like, like yeah. to be honest, they treat, they treat you like crap. I don't know, I don't know yeah. how that went for you, but I've seen this happen where you get treated like crap. Uh huh. Because you're no yeah. longer performing, yeah. uh, you're no longer performing, or you're declining in your performance. Uh, but mm-hmm. nobody's ever, but nobody's ever gonna ask you, "Hey, everything good?" You know, nobody's gonna ask you that question. They're just gonna just, mm-hmm. oh, you're not performing well, you suck, and you just kind of get cast yeah. aside, like slowly. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. slowly. It's it's. Uh, I've seen this happen, but yeah, I just wanted to add that. What are your thoughts on that? Um, well, at least like my coach, um, like she was great on that. She actually yeah. like respected us more as a person than an athlete, yeah. which I was grateful for. And, but I know a lot of coaches like that to yeah, yeah. base their action, like how they um, react to their players based on like yeah. how they perform. You, you yeah. see it, it's evident, but that's, I'm so grateful and thankful that my coach was never like that. Um, but, uh, and it's actually really interesting. You said that because my friend and I, we both actually, even though we had those talks, um, we still improved so much. Like she ended up starting over um, mm-hmm. a player um, and gained that spot. Um, and I like every day someone would tell me like, dude, you improve so much or blah, blah, blah. Like, so it that in that aspect, it didn't, cause we were still making the most yeah. out of the situation yeah. Yeah. for yeah. us, even though we had those talks um, and it was in our mind, we were like, okay, no, we can't, we can't think like that. We have, we yeah. would always kind of like mindset shift and be like, mm-hmm. Cause we both, I think there was comfort that we were both going through the same thing, mm-hmm. but we we're also like, okay, no, let's make the most out of this. But, um, but yeah, it, it that definitely does happen. Sorry. I lost count of my train of thought. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, okay. So, um, so you guys, you know, you guys having those conversations. So mm-hmm. that's, that was the starting phase. And can you talk about mm-hmm. when you, can you talk about the moment uh, where you, you, the moment when you finally when you finally embraced it can you talk about that when you because in the beginning you, you're, you're trying to fight it right uh you're mm, trying to fight yeah. it off you know I'm, yeah. because you still because your, your self-identity is still an athlete right we mm-hmm. always yeah. in life we always act on how we see ourselves right so so mm-hmm. in the beginning you have this conversation with your girl uh, with your best friend and, and you guys mm-hmm. are disregarding it but then at which point in, in your uh, can you talk about when it finally became evident to you that you know what this is this is actually be this is actually me now this is my new, ver- this is my new self identity. And you stop fighting and you're like, I'm going to just be this. I think when COVID hit, when COVID hit, okay. I feel like a lot of people went through the same thing of like, what's going on? Like what, what's happening? Blah, blah, blah. But it was during those, during that time of COVID, like when we, everyone was in quarantine, um, I, I was still, I was like, okay, like, you know, still fine, I guess. Like I was still trying to make the most out of the situation, but it wasn't until like the Zoom meetings we had as a team and my coach kind of just like, every single Zoom meeting, I was like, I was kind of more turned off by just playing the sport. I was like, this is not fun for me. Like, how come I'm not, I'm like dreading going to the Zoom meetings. Yeah. I'm dreading, I'm dreading this. And like, it also, and when I was talking to some of my other friends who have transferred for and went to a different school, um I was like kind of talking about it with them I was like I don't feel I don't feel it anymore I don't like when I was looking back at my practices even though I was making the most out of the situation I remember like I I would dread going to practice yeah. in terms of like I was waiting for it to end and yeah with and that one right there like looking back now and talking to like people I was like ooh, that should have been like you know kind of like oh whoa because that, that happens uh, and also people don't but, understand like that that's that 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 is so hard when you're doing something and you don't really want to be in there. Right. Yeah. That is and, very hard. Yeah. And it's like, and it's like, you're trying, you know, everyone else like, being you know, off each other. So you're like, okay, like you're in it. Like you're that one 
you know, hour and a half to two hour practices and yeah. you're in there and you're grinding, but at the same time, you're also like, I'm like working my butt off, but I'm like, when is it done? Like, when yeah. am I, when can I leave? And that's how it was um, during that season. And um, when it finally kind of like hit me, it was when my coach was like, when we would have the Zoom meetings and she was saying that there were more DS is coming in. And I'm like, there's more, there's more people. Like <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting more people on the team and like volleyball, there's only like, you know, I think a lot for our roster would be 20 people. That's yeah. a lot. And that's where we were going to have the, the season after. Um, so I was like, that's a lot. And I'm like, what is that, what is that going to do for me? So it was just like something, it was like the small things that were just like adding up things like that. Um, that were kind of just like really getting to me. And I guess the hardest part wasn't even telling my friends. It was telling my parents. Yeah. This was my dad. That, that sucked. Um, because when I told my dad, I guess, but with my family, everyone was like supportive and whatnot. They're like, okay, like, no, like that makes sense, blah, blah, blah. And they knew how much sports meant to me. But then my dad, since he, him and I were both, like I said, from the very beginning, like, like this, we were super, super close. He went through the whole process with me, did everything with me. It hit him just as much as it hit me. And he was just like, you know, chewed my ear off and was like, no, like, no, you're not. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You know, like, yeah casting any of them and I was just like no I'm serious but then um it was it was um that happened but that was kind of like the beginning of quarantine but yeah. then something happened and I think that was kind of God's way of um kind of like breaking me down in a sense um and this is like really interesting um, I remember when that whole phase happened when I told like my whole family because I was never really honest I never had that conversation besides with my friend I never opened up and voiced my opinions of transferring or going to a different school or whatnot and um I remember I voiced it to like my family and um and I remember we were doing doing bible studies and I was just like praying and blah 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 I remember like God saying like um I had to break you down to the point where you first like loved me and like when I started getting real with my faith it was when God it was during my recruiting process. And he was like, I had to break you down to the point where in an instant, like you were going to go through that same process of being recruited again. And I was like, Whoa, God, okay. Like I'm listening now. So like you had to do, you had to break me down again, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. So from that time, which is like beginning of quarantine to summer, I was like still thinking I was going to go back to school. I was going to go back to my college sophomore year, do the whole thing again, you know, COVID style, whatever. And then, um, and then this thing came up. It, I was supposed to go back to school and report for training camp two weeks before. Um, but um, this, this fitness slash ministry kind of popped up into my life. And um, this thing called Fit for Christ. And I remember I went to it with my sister and um, I like, fell in love with it I fell in love with like the mission the, the aspect of it because fitness was you know a big part of me too um and it was like worship it was a workout worship and words so I was like wow these are all three things that I love like all in one and I ended up falling in love with it and I remember um within those two weeks that I was supposed to report back it was just non-stop signs and confirmations of me just it was just evident in my face mm. of wait, whoa, I started questioning, like, am I supposed to go back to school? Am I supposed to go back um, and just, like, play volleyball? Because, like, that seed was already planted in my head, like, you know, mm -hmm. do I want to dip, do I not want to dip? And I just remember um, the, one of the, the uh, uh, Fit for Christ um, founders or whatever called my sister because they were close. They called my sister. He's like, hey, like, how does your sister like the ministry, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, Oh, she loves it. And the night before my sister and I were having a conversation and she asked me how I liked it. And I said, dude, I would, I honestly, if I didn't have volleyball, I would, I would want to be part of like their social media team yeah. and just yeah. like shoot videos for them and do all that stuff, go on mission trips with them. And she, um, so she ended up telling them what I told her and they're like, Whoa, that's crazy. We were literally just praying for that, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Oh, that's crazy. That's cool. Right didn't think much about it 
later on that night I started praying to God I was like because I don't know in me I was like I should probably pray about this you know it was kind of like mm-hmm. you know stirring something in me so I ended up praying about it and then I opened up my email and um I opened up my email to uh it was like one of uh, the, the the those daily devotions from like my pastor mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um it was about like Abraham and Isaac for those who like you know <laughs> those know and it was basically um God it was basically Abraham giving up his son um on the altar right out of obedience of God right he gave that story as an example and um, he was basically saying like the key words that like that I still remember is what are you holding on to that's holding you back from entering something new and I was like "Mm." and in that case it was volleyball for me I was literally holding on to that and um I was like okay I was like I'm listening you know the day after I haven't talked to my mom um close family but like I didn't talk to my mom those days before about anything I go into her room she's like hey like are you going back to Westmont like what's the deal like do you guys have a season blah 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 and I was like oh I don't know and she's like I know your spirit's willing it's like I know like you want to stay home and I'm like what makes you say that kind of like told her the, or- the whole ordeal and whatnot and I was like geez like mother's no best like you know yeah. it was like one of those cases of like mother's intuition blah 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 and then um that later on in that week in the weekend um I got prophesied over. I don't know if anyone knows that. I don't know, but like I got prophesied over um, and whatnot earlier that day. But then it kind of like was a confirmation of um, another sign confirmation of, okay, maybe I should take this leap of faith and, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, call, you know, just dip. Um, um, And then later on that night, we had Fit for Christ and we went my siblings and I we went and off the bat people were just like praying for me because I was injured I had a skating accident so I had a boot on people were coming up to me praying for me and this one girl didn't know anything about my situation she prayed over my foot and um she knew I played volleyball but she was like maybe you're not supposed to play volleyball and I was like what yeah I was like tripping I was like whoa and then that that mess and then that night that message the pastor used the same story of Abraham and Isaac and um and he was just like sometimes God what God blesses you with this is what I remember what God blesses you with he also asks you to sacrifice He's like what do you, what is God asking you to sacrifice and I'm like it was just there it was yeah. and like that message I was literally so broken I remember he like ask people to come up and whatever he's like if this is you like you know what are you holding on to blah blah blah. I remember I was like I just went up and I was like bawling my eyes out and I just like knew when that situation and and Mm -hmm. from that week I was like it was just too real too evident um of what God was just trying to tell me and it was basically just to take that leap of faith and um you know say no to volleyball and pursue something different and in that case at that time it was to um be part of like the social media team of that of fit for christ um that i'm no longer part of um but in that season in that in that time that was what god used to kind of like take me out of some of volleyball and bring me into something different and now um so many (laughs) doors have opened up for me yeah (laughs) so many different things um like the island city media group uh I'm interning for them. I'm a staff writer for them. And it's, and I, you know, make videos for them some, from time to time. Um, when I was at Fit for Christ, I was making their videos for social media mm-hmm. every week. That was fun. And, um, and yeah, and like I'm working with my family, but it's just a lot of open, a lot of doors have been opening ever since yeah. I kind of took that leap of faith and whatnot. But that's about it. And I'm, <laughs> I, I yeah it's a lot of it uh but yeah so that's kind of like my story yeah (laughs) no uh, thank you for sharing a lot but (laughs) a lot of little different things but no (laughs) no thank you for sharing you know uh you know any athlete that's watching this can totally relate you know if you're an athlete Mm -hmm. you went to college um you can totally relate um i guess the one thing i would say you know just to 
uh, piggyback off of like what you said, because um, I know this is something, this is for all the athletes out there. Um, I know everybody has a dream. You know, I don't want to sound like a dream killer, but <laughs> 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 but this, you know, but I do want to paint the picture of the reality, right? You know, to mm-hmm. to make it to a D1 college, there's like a small percentage of, there's like, there's like a small percentage of athletes that make D1. If you want to make pros, you know, I think there's, you know, I think the numbers is like less than 1% of people that mm-hmm. play high school mm-hmm. football and college football that make it into the pros. So it's very yeah. important. I, I, I always, you know, there's something, I feel like this is something that needs to be more, uh, that needs to be educated from the very beginning, right? Because I feel like yeah. it can heal, it can definitely help a lot of athletes out there because, mm-hmm. you know, many athletes go out there, put, go all in and put all their, uh, all their, uh, their whole future um, mm-hmm. into, into sports, you know, there's, you know, of course, like there's always pros and cons to anything, you know, everything is not, it's not mm-hmm. always going to be perfect, but there's, you know, there's going to be, of course, are there people out there that make it to the, to the uh, uh, make it, do you want to make it to a, a pro level? Yeah, that's great. You know, um, mm-hmm. but the reality is there's many people that don't and mm-hmm. nobody talks about them yeah. or, or, no, yeah. or, or, or reality. Nobody cares about them. You know, mm-hmm. and they go through. There's a lot of things that these athletes go through. Like you said, either during that transition or post, uh, or post mm-hmm. uh, uh, after your career is done being an athlete. And then, uh, mm-hmm. because like I said, the reality is, is you, things are not going to work out. And that's why it's so important to always have an open heart and listen to, and listen mm-hmm. to that voice. And that's something I've always I've always heard from a lot of people, from successful people. It's something I, I take advice. Like the only person that knows who you can be. And the only person that knows mm-hmm. your destiny and where you need to go is like that voice. We all have that voice. You know that voice in your heart? Mm-hmm. It's always talking to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but some, yeah. a lot of times we kind of disregard it. Sometimes we don't listen to it. But that voice always knows like where you should, you should go. It's like our inner compass from like from God, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's always, it's always going to point to where you should go. But a lot of times, you know, we, we can be stubborn. <laughs> we mm-hmm. can be arrogant. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, we can be, like I said, oh, we've, we've, uh, we pay attention more to the validation of what people, the opinions of other people, mm-hmm. right? Instead of mm-hmm. listening to like what we need to do, but uh, just understand out there, like, you know, the, the one thing I always say for every athlete is go, like it's important to go out there and get your college degree, mm-hmm. you know? And yeah. this is, you know, if you, if you can make it to the pros, great, you know? But the thing is, if you don't make it, you should make sure that you have a uh, college degree. And, and that's something uh, we don't, there's not a lot of content out there on social media about this, you know? Like yeah. these athletes, yeah. uh, the, or these coach, or the coaches, or these programs that sometimes like the uh, sell these kids a dream. Hey, you're gonna make it. You make it, make it. Like I told you before, they treat you based on your performance. As soon as you don't mm-hmm. make it, they, they just totally just like discard mm-hmm. you. <laughs> yeah. And th- and this yeah, is fact. Like, this this happens. This happens in yeah. in real life. And th- and then because these athletes never took their college degree or their college career seriously, their their education, and then mm-hmm. either they get their scholarship gets dropped or, you know, uh, other yeah. scholarship gets dropped or they graduate in a, in a degree that means nothing, you know, mm-hmm. in a, like, in like, you know, they took a, they took a major, you know, what's like, what's like the lowest major in, in college, like rec- recreational services or something. <laughs> I, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> right. Like the uh, easy one. I, yeah. Yeah. So they, 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 number one, they take a major that's, that's have a real, a real value in the real world, but also they take a major that that's not really something they're passionate about. So when they graduate, mm-hmm. they, they can't do anything with that major because number one, they didn't take it seriously. It's not something they're interested in. So it's just a piece of paper, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and this exactly. is a real, and, this, and, yeah. and that's the, and that's the reality. And I'm so, I mean, you know, uh, this is actually my first time doing a podcast. So I've been talking about the athlete life. So I'm very grateful that you, you shared oh, really? it. Yeah. Yeah. But oh, I feel wow. like this is, but, but this is something that happens to millions and millions of kids out there and they mm-hmm. struggle. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that's why it's, that's why it's so important. I feel like it's so important to like listen to yourself. You know what's best for yourself. Like if you give it an opportunity, mm-hmm. take advantage of opportunity. That's one thing I always say. Like take advantage of opportunities because it's very limited. You know, not because mm-hmm. the reality is not everybody gets an opportunity to go to college. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So like you know, if you look at the numbers, like not like most people don't go to college. There's a small percentage of of, uh, of uh, high school students that don't go to college. So if you're offered the opportunity, mm-hmm. of, of course, take it. Right. If you yeah. if you can make it like you know, always do your best. But if you can make it to the pros, great. Take advantage of the opportunity. But also if you don't make mm-hmm. it to the pros, if you don't make it to another level, that's that's God, you know, every like like you said, God, like God has a plan for everybody. Yeah. Right. God yeah. has a plan for everybody. 
and that's why you know and that's why there's so many people out there that didn't make it to the uh, d1 or they didn't make it to the pros but they became very successful in different careers they became mm-hmm. great lawyers great doctors yeah. um yeah. i can't i can't think of the nfl athlete that he gave up his nfl career and became a very successful surgeon i don't know if you heard it, if you saw that story oh yes yes oh. yes i i've yeah, definitely yeah. seen it but I know who you're talking about. I have a yeah, picture. Yeah, 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 right. So he gave up, like he made that mm-hmm. sacrifice because he, you know, even though he he was good enough to make it to the NFL pros, but he gave that up and he became a surgeon. And now he's saving lives, you know, mm-hmm. uh, on, on, on their medical table, right? So, yeah. and I feel, and, and I, I just wish if we had a society, we had a culture where it's more focused on the individual and not the, the mm-hmm. benefit of the, of the school, of the college, yeah. the coaches, mm-hmm. the the reality is it's all about money nowadays. The schools, it's all about money. Yeah. And uh, yeah, especially it's, I'm glad it's getting more attention now about, yeah. I guess, like, especially just the gender wise, but it goes even bigger than that. But I'm glad that it's being recognized. Um, yeah. Now, so, yeah. So, especially. that's one thing. Yeah, yeah. For all those, everybody out there, just like, I feel like the, I love what you said about, um, you know, God was like, you know, was talking to you, right? And I feel like in life, like there's always signs. Like, you know, when you, when people say, you know, there's red flags or signs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Within, within people, within relationships, within, mm-hmm. you know, within jobs, there's always signs. And the same thing with our life, there's always signs, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I always feel like that the universe, like God always finds a way to guide you to where you need to be. But you have to be like, you have mm-hmm. to listen. You know, you have to listen and, and, yeah. and, and embrace embrace life as the way it is and sometimes we kind of like we kind of try to force things you know you can't force things mm, no you can't no, force no. relationships you can't force somebody to love you you can't force somebody to be happy you, can, you can't uh-huh. force something you can't force your life to turn out the way it is like you have to go with the flow you know live that journey and embrace things and um but uh, but like i say it's, it's it's really hard because like you know your whole life you grew up as an athlete <laughs> yeah that's the tough part but that's it's, only you though yeah just that's why it's slowly yeah. but surely yeah and i love, I love what you, me of that identity yeah, yeah. And i love what you said like you know god stripped you to the point where you came back to him you know and, li- yeah. and listen to him yeah. and i feel like i feel like that that happens a lot like especially a very prideful and strong and stubborn individual you know god knows <laughs> that you know you're not going to make the right choice for you so he's going to put you in situations yeah to hum- humble yeah. you <laughs> exactly <laughs> to take exactly. break down that pride break down that mm-hmm. <laughs> the stubbornness yes it breaks you down <laughs> yeah. when you have no other option him. to see you wake yeah. up and finally see the light oh okay i got you yeah okay i got yep. you so, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah and go ahead yep no i just want to say like as athletes and whoever does like end up watching and whatnot like if you are like you're more than an athlete like you are yes. more than just you know that number or that you know or what people just see you as you there's more than that yeah. you have so much more yeah. to give than just being an athlete and that's something that I, that was hard for me to get rid of was yeah. that aspect of that ego and I wrote a post about this but like the ego of being that college athlete or you know quote unquote making it out being the first person in my family to be a collegiate athlete in the cousins or whatever um but I had to like get rid of that I, I had to let go of that identity yeah. of what people were claiming me as. And, um, and like so many, even my dad's friends, like I had the thought of like, Oh my gosh, like what is my dad's friends going to think of me? Because yeah. they're the ones who watched me play. They're the ones who like, you know, would take the time out of their day to come watch me play or travel to come see me. But like I, but the, now I'm not, now I'm not an athlete anymore. And obviously it was always be a part of me, but that, you know, that title, I don't hold on yeah. to anymore. So, but, but like I said, you are more than an athlete. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And just understand for everybody watching, especially like if you're in high school, you're still trying to figure out, just understand that our journey of life, we're going to change. You know, nobody mm-hmm. stays Constantly the same. Evolving. evolving. Yep. And understand that, you know, when it comes to life, when it comes to figuring out our purpose, you know, it's going to, it's, it's something that we find out along the way. So, yeah. and like I said, you, you just, you just like, don't force anything, just go with it. Like you said, some of you guys that's watching this, you guys maybe one of those lucky and, and fortunate people, uh, they're gonna go and to, to the highest level. Hey, great, great for you. But at the same time, if you don't make it, you're lucky as well because that's gonna guide you. That's gonna guide you to a different path 
uh, that you maybe you may not be aware of, but like that's that's the beauty of life. Like we can't like we can't see like the mm-hmm. the top of the mountain, right? Like God can see the yeah. top of the mountain. Uh, we mm-hmm. can only see. We can only climb. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can exactly. only climb. We can exactly. only climb. And I know the climb can be tough sometimes. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, but I feel, yeah, that's what everybody out there that's watching. Yeah, like you are more than an athlete. And, that, and, that's, um, and that's something that our society, you know, sometimes they put label, labels on us. And of course, mm-hmm. depending on uh, upbringing, depending on where you, how you grew up. But I do understand that sometimes as athletes, we put that label on us and we just fixed on that label that we have mm-hmm. to be an athlete, we have to be an athlete, we have to be an athlete. Mm-hmm. And if we, if, we, if we let that define us, and if we don't, yeah. if, it, if it doesn't happen, and then it's just, it's, just, it's a very tough uh, reality to, to try to figure out because you've been telling yourself your whole life that um, that's who you are. So, exactly. and then I, I think the best thing you can tell yourself, just be the best version of yourself and whatever that version is, go with it, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. So exactly. just be the best, whatever you do, just be your best, work hard, be the best, do your best. It doesn't matter what it is, right? Do your best and just whatever that thing that comes that comes naturally by life and uh, by the world, by the universe, whatever you believe in, it's going to come, right? You know, you don't like, you don't, what's, what's that saying? Like, you know, you don't, you don't go to success, you attract success, you know? Mm-hmm. So you attract, mm-hmm. you attract who you are. So if you just a great, if you just do, you become your best version of yourself, if you attract the opportunity to go to the uh, go to go to D one and go to the uh, the pro level, hey, great, you attract that, take it. But if you don't attract that, you attract something else like social media, being us working on editing videos, social media, being the yeah. being a lawyer, being this. If you attract that, then go with. Then that's you gotta listen. You know, yeah. we attract. Mm-hmm. You know, I always believe that that who we are will attract the right things for us. Uh, but exactly. the thing is, we we most people we don't. We don't uh, we try we don't we don't try to be ourselves we try to be something else or society what society tells us and we're trying to force okay, something was, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so just want yeah i just wanted to uh say say that everybody uh if you have any comments you know any thoughts about what we talked about if you're a fellow athlete you know show some love show some comments we'd love to hear your thoughts about everything we talked about <laughs> mm-hmm. all right yeah definitely uh but yeah thank you for sharing your life story i really really appreciate that uh, but we have some topics. We got some great topics to talk about <laughs> <laughs> on this podcast. We got, some hot, this. we got some hot topics for y'all. Um, uh, yes. I do want to go into, I know you're very passionate about talking about mental health and mindset. Uh, that's something that you're mm-hmm. passionate about. So I'll open that floor up to you um, uh, about regarding mental health and mindset. No, yeah. Um, I just, I mean, a lot of people, I feel like in, in all aspects, even just like everyone on any level um, regarding mental health, we've all experienced the battle of our mind. And I feel like everything that we do in life mm-hmm. is literally just a battle within our mind. And uh, I've been posting a lot about like just mindset in general, but like everything starts up here. Like what you mm-hmm. think you will end up become. And um, I think like the most simplest way to put it is just like, what are you feeding your mind? Like, what are you putting into your mind? Because that eventually will believe what mm-hmm. you will end up like. That will end up what you believe will, you know, if it's in your heart, that's what you believe. Then you will end up like speaking that over. <clears throat> and I feel like um, like when you speak things, that has a lot of power too in itself. So I feel like um, just mindset wise, we have to be conscious of, what we are saying to ourselves who like who is saying things to us what are they saying is it fulfilling us is it draining us is it you know just be con be conscious of like how you feel when you are putting things into your mind this even goes as deep as like what kind of music you're listening to because I also I feel like that's happened with me I felt this before where it's like certain songs or certain genre that I listen to like for example if I listen to too much rap I get angrier. Like I'm just a, like a more <laughs> mean, I'm a moodier person. I'm just not you don't, you don't, the most happy. You, 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 know, you, you, don't, you don't become emo. You listen to much rock. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, exactly. And or not even that, like listening to very, very sad songs that just put you into yeah. your feels. If you keep listening yeah. to that, you will be sad. And um and I think I have a lot of friends who like go through a lot of like mental health, um, like depression and just anxiety and whatnot. And like I said, I, it starts here. And obviously like, you know, people, some people are like clinically, you know, um, like diagnosed and whatnot. It's 
science behind you know imbalances but at the same time um once we have like control over our thoughts and what we are putting into our head you become so powerful powerful in terms of like you take control over yourself and I think that's just like really important for people just to grasp is everything is here and and this goes and and this just goes for like life in general like are you like what you want to do in life like success and like your purpose um like never so sell yourself short like if you dream big you know you will think big um if you keep telling yourself that you're not worthy of it or you're never gonna get there you will become that you will become whatever you tell yourself or what you will become whatever you believe people are telling you um if you are believing what they're saying Mm -hmm. so that's just like in a bubble like what um what I wanted to share about just mindset and mental health and because once you grasp that and I know it's hard like the hardest the hardest thing is just battling your mind and just pushing past those barriers and yeah yeah that's okay no about that um no 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 that's really that's facts um no this is something these are things that they don't teach at school you know, mm-hmm. uh, they don't teach, I wish, you know, I wish they would teach these things at school, <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. but yeah, everything starts with the mindset. I'm a very big believer in mindset. I always tell people, it's like, you know, uh, the only difference between the average and the great is the mind, you know, mm-hmm. um, because you have to think about it, everybody out there, you have to think about it, you know, like everything starts here, you know, our mm-hmm. thoughts, everything starts with the thought, you know, the way we see things, the way we feel, our emotions, our actions, even the way we move our body, all of it originates with our mind. So you have to be able to control your mind and, uh, yeah. and uh, be able to be able to like, it's always, because I, you know, I always tell people like, you know, I, I forgot the quote, but you know, our reality is based on our perception of how we see things and how we yeah. interpret yeah. things and how, and how we respond to things. And yeah. Uh, if you are not in control of your mind and you're, you have a very really negative mindset and you mm-hmm. um, have a negative inner self-talk and you see yourself as a negative person, like, like you said, you know, being ugly, I'm not good enough, I'm average, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a failure, then that's going to be the way you see life. And yeah. then all you, is, all you yeah. see is pain, all you see is struggle, all you see mm-hmm. is all the worst things that can happen to you, but, you, but it overshadows the small opportunities that life gives you. Mm-hmm. And you never take advantage of those opportunities to a to move forward. So that's something I always say to everybody out there, you know, take some time, personal growth, um, take some time to feed your mind and to master your mind, you know, uh, yeah. and never, and most people never do that, you know, because I, and I also mm-hmm. understand that's something that that's never taught uh, to anybody. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, when you, when, whenever it comes to like your own journey and whenever of, of personal growth and, and self-love, that's not, it's, it's a, it's a decision that you have to go look for. It's a journey you have to yeah. go look for. It's not going to come find you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Right. Oh, for sure, definitely. And also, I think this is something like many people don't are not aware of, like, um, like the thoughts that you have, the way you the way you see things, the way you, uh, especially like your your thoughts, like your beliefs. I don't I don't think anybody ever takes a chance and question their own thoughts and their own beliefs, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. I think one of the biggest things I've heard that you know everything we do in life, our our actions comes from our comes from our values and comes from our beliefs, and when we grow up. We are taught certain values. We are taught certain beliefs based on the culture uh, or your parents, you know, they all, or the school or your surroundings. But a lot of times mm-hmm. people never, the people that really find like love and fulfillment and real happiness and joy are people that actually live their own personal values, beliefs and be their own authentic self and think mm-hmm. their own authentic thoughts. And that's one of the hardest transitions. It's like you said, you know, you were, you were taught in your life that, to believe that being an athlete is who you are. That was something that mm-hmm. was taught to you at a very young age. And of course you were in situations and environment that kind of reinforced that belief. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the reality yeah. is that's not, but the, what God taught, what God showed you, that wasn't, that wasn't your belief. You know, mm-hmm. he had to teach you that there's a different belief that you should believe in. There's a different value you should value in and which is a different a path of life, but he had to break you down. So I feel like a lot of people, uh, are afraid or never question their beliefs you know why you know if you're very negative today i always ask people it's like when i meet negative people i want to ask why are you negative 
Mm-hmm. Have you ever thought about mm-hmm. that? People never, never ask them yeah. that question. Where do those thoughts yeah. come from? Because it usually originates from a certain experience or event mm-hmm. in their past. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why exactly. you're hurt. There's a reason why you're hurt. There's a reason why you're unhappy. Yeah. But you don't, but you don't mm-hmm. want to go there because that experience is very traumatic yeah. for you. Yeah. And, and you don't That's realize true. that your, your mindset is because of that mindset. So it's not really your own true mind. It's not really your own true uh, self. It's just, you know, the life we, you know, the, no matter what, how, which society you grew up in, the, the society will always trying to condition you to be, to uh, be aligned with that society. You know, mm-hmm. that's what, that's what, that's what, that's, that's real life. <laughs> your yeah, family will try yeah. to condition you to be like the family, your, your school, you know, your school, your, doesn't matter what society mm-hmm. or social group you're going to be part of, that social group is always going to try to condition you to be, to be, no, to be part of, to be part of everybody else. Right. Yeah. So I, that's one thing I just want to say to everybody out there, you know, take some time, master your mind. And, you know, that's, they always say, if you master your mind, you master your life. Right. That's but, um, <laughs> but uh, but I, I ask everybody out there question everything mm-hmm. question your thoughts I did this for like a long time ago I literally mm-hmm. wrote down every kind of thoughts I had on my wants my desires my goals oh, I, I, yeah. wrote, I wrote I, I wrote that on, on a piece of paper and then I just went down the list okay this is this is my goals this is my dream this is my want this is how I think and I really went down from every single on that list and asked myself is this really really mine mm-hmm. and I tried to find the origin of the yes. goal, find the origin of that thought, mm-hmm. origin of why I see things, so why I'm, why am I like this? Mm-hmm. And then when I when I really broke it down, then I had to really dig deep into my past. I'm like, oh shoot, there's a, there's there's things about by myself I suppress, I don't yeah. want to deal with. It's a dark part of my life, a dark part of my past, and mm-hmm. this is why I am the way I am, mm-hmm. you know. So Definitely. so it, it's 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 a, it's a hard journey. <laughs> I'm not I'm not mm-hmm. saying it's easy. If everybody if it was easy, everybody would do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's something I want to say is question. If you, if you find it really, really hard to be, to be positive, to be empowering, you have a very negative mindset, you have a very negative relationship with yourself, and you're always degrading yourself, tearing yourself down, bashing yourself, trashing yourself. You have to ask yourself, wh- why do I think this way? And where did these thoughts come from? And I guarantee you, if you ask those questions and, really, and willing to have the courage to go down that hole, you're going to find the answers. Mm-hmm. And once you heal, once you let, let that go and figure that out and fix it, then you realize that you, that's not really you. It was just, ah. you were conditioned to be this way, but there's a whole nother level of you and whole. And of course that's, if you tap into that person, that's when your life becomes unlimited because once your mind is like, you wouldn't have that unlimited growth, abundant mindset, mm-hmm. like life just like yes. takes off, takes off yes. for you. Just wanted, just wanted to say that anything you want to add to that? No, that's so good. I agree. And that just comes with, um, like one that helps in like self-awareness, you know, because I'm so big on just being self-aware and like whenever in any aspect of like, whether it's mentally, physically, or spiritually, and I don't feel a certain, like I feel kind of like an imbalance. Yeah. I can easily go to like the root of that problem because I'm aware of like, why, why do I feel a certain way? Oh, it's because I saw something on social media that. Yeah, exactly. Or whatever or why do I feel disgusting? Like, cause I didn't work out today, you know? So it's all about just like, once you ask those questions to yourself, like yeah. how that talk, how that self, that sense of self-awareness, it's so much easier just to realign yeah. yourself back, but no, everything you said. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good, good, good. No, cause I, I mean, you know how many times I've met girls are like, you know, oh, I'm so ugly, you know, but in reality they're not. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I'll, they'll ask them, do you think you're ugly or did somebody tell you you were ugly? Yeah. And then, yeah. then, then, then you see their like their mind like mm-hmm. thinking about it, right? They're like, oh my god, like they, they realize, right? Yeah. It's not so a lot of people don't realize like, a lot of people are just like just existing or unconsciously living a life that they don't realize that their own thoughts. Like a lot of people realize that a lot of people don't know that their thoughts they have is not their thoughts. A lot mm-hmm. of people don't know this. Yeah. Like, but they think they are because they're not like you said, the lack of self-awareness, they're not aware of it. Mm-hmm. right it's like the yeah. matrix have you guys seen the matrix people are just plugged in no <laughs> have you ever seen so the matrix no i haven't no. oh no you gotta, you gotta watch you gotta watch the, you gotta watch the matrix <laughs> so uh but like if you if you anybody watch the matrix you guys can relate to it it's like the matrix people are plugged in into this reality and then they think it's reality but you have to like unplug yourself um you definitely gotta watch that so you can understand what i'm saying <laughs> like, <whoa. laughs> watch the matrix it's a good movie um 
you gotta unplug yourself and wake up to the reality and real and and the, any I'm telling you if you've seen if you see people that are just living a, a life uh, living a great life it's crazy when you see these people and you really dig into their story and that's why I'm a very big uh, advocate for like, listening to people's stories a lot of the great people you look up to right now a lot of people you look up to you admire those people came from like crazy circumstances growing mm-hmm. up yeah crazy difficult they, they went through a lot of shit in their life mm-hmm. but they were they but they, like I said they had to like really take control of their mind and they didn't let that they, they didn't let their circumstances dictate like who they are and what they wanted to do for their life they just they found a way to just like stay focused stay true to themselves and became the, the best version of themselves and that's why they are who they are today yeah. uh, but, but a lot of people you know uh, don't uh, yeah, I'm not uh, what's that word woke people are not woke nowadays they're not woke <laughs> yeah people are not woke <laughs> people yeah people are just like existing sleeping through life and um, it's sad because people don't know that but to you but I, like I said I feel like that the only way you can figure that out is through hardship like pain like pain you know that's one thing I always say you know pain really uh, pain really reveals to you like what you need to do all right um, that was a good topic. That was a good topic. Everybody that listen, any thoughts, any co- concerns, any comments, drop some comments below. Definitely want to hear your thoughts on that. Um, I do want to go into shift into the next topic. Um, I want to talk about happiness. So some of the things we want to, I promote on this podcast is happiness. So, uh, one of the topics I know you mentioned before, uh, we do want to talk about, so we give you guys as much value. Uh, I know you wanted to talk about, uh, what do you do when you care about somebody and they do not care about you? <laughs> yeah, that one. Wow. Um, well, first off, it's always love at the end of the day. Like if someone mm-hmm. doesn't, if someone doesn't reciprocate that same energy towards you or, you mm-hmm. know, they don't per se like you or love you, um, kill them with love. I mean, they cannot like you, but you can control how you respond. You can control what you do. And what I got to say is just, you can love from afar, but you don't have to worry about what they're doing. You know, you can just keep doing your life, keep doing you, but don't get so caught up in what other people think about you. Cause when you get caught up in, about what other people think about you, that's when, you know, it starts hitting you and you start worrying right. about other people. You start living for other people, not living true to you and live authentically to you. Mm-hmm. So with that, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, also, like kind of like going back to what I just said, um, kill them with love. Uh, well, not kill them with kindness and overwhelm them with love. So yeah. if they do end up kind of talking about you, be like, oh, I don't care about them. Uh, you know, like they're whatever, whatever. Um, they can't say anything about you because, you know, your character speaks louder and your actions speak louder. But um, what I have to say about people not caring about you, just don't think about them. You know, just don't yeah. like just live authentically, live, <clears throat> genuinely, live, walk in your lane, walk your talk, um, talk your walk, you know, just yeah. 2020 vision, focus on you and your path and your journey. And, um, and yeah, just, just don't, don't even, I ask you. <laughs> don't even pay attention. <laughs> I want to, I want to ask you, uh, has that, has that ever happened to you? where you cared about a certain individual and uh, they did not reciprocate that back to you. And that really hurt you. Oh, that really um, affected, affected you. Has that ever happened to you at some point in time in your life? In generally, um, I guess like recently, um, I kind of shifted a lot of my content, like, you know, social media wise from just posting, you know, just like happy, like and I'm still, I'm still that, but I'm also posting a lot more, fitness stuff but incorporating more motivational stuff with that Mm -hmm. and it's so funny because what I want to do or like what it's geared towards like you know for other girls or you know for girls more specifically girls to relate to and whatnot but it's so funny because I received the most rejection from girls and people that like I cared about growing up with in high school and you know we were really close um and whatnot like you you know like just growing up in the same area mm-hmm. they've all followed me they all block like a lot of people block me and like all at once and I'm like whoa like that's really like that's crazy like that really you, hit me. why do you why do you feel like they did that just I your own but on your own uh, opinion, uh, your own, in, my opinion yeah. in my opinion I think 
I'm just doing something different, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not I'm like, the same person, but I'm also a completely different person than who I was back in high school, who I was last year, if that. Um, and I think because I changed, you know, a lot of people don't like to see that. So mm. um, because like my content changed or whatever, or I'm posting different things now. Yeah. I guess people don't like to see that maybe. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, so that kind of, that hit me for a while. I was like, wow, how come the people that I grew up with are people that I care about with um, are the ones that are not supporting me. Like, they don't care about me anymore. Or, you know, they kind of like block me from their life out of nowhere. Um, but then quick mindset shift and was like, okay, no, I can't care about them. You know, like, cause there's other people who do care yeah. about me and who do love me and who do support me. And they're the ones that are like commenting or swiping up saying they needed mm -hmm. to see that for that day or they needed to hear that. So, so yeah. Yeah. So I, I know, I know growing up, you always have like, you know, multitude of friends, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but, but we always have like the small group, the A1 day ones, you know, the small mm -hmm. select group. So even that your A1 day ones, like did they also unfollow you as well? It wasn't my A1 day ones. It was, but I was like that person that um, had a lot of people, but like my A1 day ones for like everywhere if that makes sense like so how many so how many a1 day ones do you have like that real 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 friends oh, that you okay not a1 day like, a1 day ones now like i never mind um that would just be my brothers and oh, oh so yeah so, so no a1 so that, they're ones. just them but though i don't even count them because they're just a given but these are just people like the people that did block me were people that i would like in high school like hung out with got a coffee with them like i like i said like i never had like a girl group i never had groups um yeah. It's just a mess around with that. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, these are girls that like or just people that I went to you yeah, know, grew up with. And I was like, oh, like all of a sudden, like what, okay. No, because what what do you we don't realize growing up in high school, like a lot of the relationships we accumulate in high school are uh, surface level relationships. Mm -hmm. So we don't, but in, but when we're young, we don't realize that we just think we're friends. Yeah. But then when you grow up as a, when you become older, you realize no real friends go deeper than the surface level. And that's how you can tell the difference between real genuine friends as when you as we get older than just yeah. surface level friends. So, so I'm saying is if, if the people that surface level friends in high school drop you, like it is like, of course, that's, it should matter because like there wasn't that, it, we were just friends on a surface level, but it wasn't deeper than that. Of yeah. course, those people, those are, those, those people don't have real intentions and real affection for you. Mm -hmm. right but the, the one the friends that we have in our lives are very we're very deep connected we have experience it's like the friends that we like we cry together we mm -hmm. laugh together we've got our hearts broken together so you know those friends that we share yeah, those very, yeah. that knows every deep secret about you and everything those like the, the real a1 a1 friends so yeah. i'm saying is so those friends did they those, those type of friends did they block you or do, we, or do you still have them together? no it would be i would say like what you said like the service level ones but i think the reason why it hit me the most was because I'm not a people pleaser, but I make sure that like, it's always, you know, no beef. I'm so unproblem. Like, I oh, cannot yo, yo, so you're, you, are, you are people, you are a people pleaser. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? <laughs> yes. <It's>, oh. <laughs> okay, then yeah, in the back end, yeah, by definition, then sure. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, that, that whole mind, like for me, that mindset was just like, yeah. okay. like that hit me. Okay. But, All right. Yeah. Did you ever uh, like, uh, care about like say like the like pick up about a guy that you really like and then he didn't reciprocate that did that ever happen to you mm -mm. no oh, okay <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> it's okay it's okay <laughs> wait as in like they cared about me no like have you had like real affection for a guy right this guy that you really care about mm -hmm. i mean maybe he doesn't know but he does uh, he doesn't know or he does know but he doesn't he doesn't show it back to you he, um yeah i've had an experience with that sorry I, yeah like no i always end things before like no <laughs> okay, um, yeah. but i guess like yeah i de i were i liked a guy and like he said that he cared about me and whatnot and showed it even but yeah. at the same time like like what second what made me second guess everything yeah was, like the entertaining like other people like oh so you're talking to other girls one -on -one. yeah but it would be you know like social media wise i'm like yeah responding you know that yeah. type of vibe. So i was like okay that's how you feel then 
Yeah. So, so how long did you took you to be aware of that? Like, you know, like how long did you entertain it? Okay, he was talking to other people, but then how long before you realized, okay, this he doesn't really care. You know, he doesn't really care about me in that way. Um, month. One so, month. So, so yeah. one month you were, I, you were okay. Yeah, uh, I picked it up. This is, I guess, why I'm I'm lucky to like grow up with boys. Is because I just see it and like I I've like kind of like grown to like oh that's how you guys are you know mm -hmm. um, and whatnot I've just like seen it but um, yeah like I guess the one month that we were talking it was just you know it was good it was great and he wasn't really on social media as much either and then um, the one time like he posted something and like all these girls were like commenting and whatnot I was like oh. Oh, okay maybe it doesn't line up or whatever and then um and he was just kind of like responding to them entertaining them and I was like oh okay like that's fine but if you don't feel the same way then just like let me know and then yeah and um I don't, I don't think he liked that <laughs> just being friends um aspect so and then that was that and I'm gone with my life okay uh, so yeah but you guys were still in the talking stage when that happened yeah we were in the talking stage and that's yeah that's yeah that's one thing about me i kind of never really leave the talking stage because I, I i always like find out the true intent oh. before and then i'm like okay just kidding <laughs> oh okay all right so i want to ask you a question because this is i mean what you're talking about right now something that happens a lot do you feel like in the talking stage should a guy be i say committed to you in the talking stage when things um, cause it, because like i said some people see talking stage is not really a it's not it's nothing official you guys are talking so yeah yeah so I you do, oh wait yeah, i'm asking your opinion because some people like when i talk to like talking stage you can still talk to them but you can still talk to other people you know oh, that's a good one um i think it depends like that's where like the communication comes in because yeah. i guess like with this guy it was both mutually like okay like we're both going to pursue each other you know so it was kind of like we're going to get to know each other but when like you're words and your actions don't align and you're saying that oh like I am that person or like oh, I can so see I can like, I want to be with you right so it's like mutual and both and I think then yeah then it should just be talking to one person and you know if you guys are both saying you guys are pursuing each other then it should just be one-on-one -on -one pursuing okay. each other but did he did he did he did he make it clear like okay let's let's only pursue each other did he say that like, it, was pretty, it wasn't like did explicit like we were going to but it was definitely like you know it was there because i i dropped another person to pursue him because he was on i mean did, did he ask for that like, did he ask you to do that no that was on me okay okay yeah I, <laughs> I felt i was like i was like this is different you know like it was i caught the vibes it was okay different. i was like yeah no 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 it's just and so if, for you, if you if you're talking to somebody, you drop everybody. You know that's you, right? You drop everybody. Yeah, yeah. I drop everybody. I'm like whoever I was talking to, and you know we're going to pursue each other. Then I will drop everyone else that I'm talking to. Right? Okay. Yeah. So um, no, this is this is this is a cool topic because this is this happens then, a lot. It happens a lot. Everyone has different interpretations. Our, yeah, yeah. Everyone so so like, so. Let me, let me let me make it like I guess go deeper. So, you, because uh, you would drop it for the one you like, right? Mm -hmm. But do you like? Have you do you like? I don't know about everybody's different, but do you do you talk to like multiple guys? Have you ever done that? I used to. Yeah. 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 Oh, so you already know the game. <laughs> I do. So I was when he did that. When he did that, I was like, okay, say less. I already know. Uh, oh, you know. okay. So all right. So no, this is a. This is a actually, you know, this is actually a good topic because uh, I've seen it both ways, you know, like uh, when you're, when you're talking to stage, you know, if we are, if, if you're talking to multiple people, then that person should talk to multiple, you know, <laughs> talk to multiple people, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know? Uh, and that's why I always tell everybody, you have to be very clear, especially like when you, when you talk to people, when you meet people, clear mm -hmm. of your, uh, don't assume that they're going to be like you. That's the biggest mistake a lot of people do. Yeah. Like if you're if you if you're if you're like an old school, if you're old school and you're you know monogamous, you like to be one person. Don't assume that that person that's showing you yeah. attention 
yes. <laughs> it's gonna give you. You have to communicate or uh, communicate to them. Uh, mm-hmm. I see this both men and women too. Like it happens to everybody. Where yeah, you know, okay. if you're good, we just assume every like we have this picture. We have this picture of what that person is in our mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have this like picture. Our thoughts. Of, yeah, uh, we we just go straight into like what we think. What, what we. we what we think about them or whatever, but you know, I mean, what's what's the, what's that? One of my favorite quotes is like, don't date somebody's potential, date their reality. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. A lot of us are trying to date somebody's potential. <laughs> like we no. see the potential. Oh my life can't even, you know, I can build a <laughs> We see we're living in the potential. Yeah, but, when, picture, <laughs> but, it's like, but what do they, what but do the they reality do? is the reality is you've never, had a conversation with them to make it exclusive <laughs> you've never committed to each other you've never had you never no. made it clear nothing's no. going on but we're like living yeah. in this yeah so yeah that's uh if you if you guys are gonna be late drop some comments i would love to hear your thoughts if you have any stories like like that i would love to hear that <laughs> live those stories but that <laughs> is the biggest mistake that i see a lot of people make nowadays in the social media game is uh we are dating people's potential and uh we not the, not the reality you know <laughs> so and we're assuming assuming a lot of things and we haven't had the conversation to tell them like what what you want in a relationship because i really believe that's do you have to make that clear in the beginning like mm-hmm. as fast as you can this is what i'm looking for this is what i want okay right. and make that clear but if you don't make that clear then everybody's just playing in within that gray area like the, yeah. I, like, I like i like to call it no man's land <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <That's laughs> you know, and of course you know what happens in no man's land you get lost <laughs> yes, in the confusion yeah oh, that's yeah. the word just being in the it, confusion like what do they think or yeah exactly you don't know you don't know you're living in this you uncertainty know. you, know, yeah, you don't that's, know that's what i hate because that's i hate wasting my time yeah so like, i feel like um as soon as i'm confused i'm like okay let's just nip it in the butt because yeah. why would i waste any more time with you if you're if you're not with me or whatever but you but, like that person it was just tough huh but you like that person, which is tough to nip it because you like that person, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And the social media, the social media only makes it worse because, like, we see everything. It's so <laughs> easy to see it. Like... So we constantly, we just constantly just like watching from the stands, um, <laughs> and just assuming everything. And then, yeah. So yeah, drop some comments below. Definitely, we'll love to hear that. Um, I know the original question was like, what would you do um, when you care about somebody? Uh, that doesn't care about you, right? And I, I know I brought this up earlier in the podcast. A lot of people, if you listen to this, uh, uh, write some notes. <laughs> but like I said, one thing I do realize a lot of people today, you know, especially if you love people, because I do believe like love is like, has to be reciprocated. It's not a one-way street. It's a two-way street. It has to work both ways. But a lot of people don't realize that, that there's a difference between love and attachment, oh, right? Yeah. And a lot of people don't know this or uh, don't realize this because, you know, love is something that comes from within, you know, that's why I always tell people love is something that you have already. Right. So it comes from within, it comes from you. It doesn't come from somebody else. So a lot of people don't realize that they're not in love with somebody. They're just attached to that person. Right. Right? And and there's a big difference because you don't see the own love within yourself or the lack of love within you, Mm -hmm. because whatever stuff you have within what's going on with with yourself Mm -hmm. That you're trying to fill that you're trying to fill that void or that space from whatever the other person is trying to, is giving you. So a lot of people that are insecure, uh, a lot of people that have low self worth or self esteem, um, mm-hmm. negative self talk, then you're gonna look for that love from from somebody else, and you become attached to them, and you think that's love, and you think that's love, but, you're, but the reality you're just attached to them. So make sure you guys know the difference. And like I said, when you love, like when you have pure love, like you don't need the love of another individual. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and like and one thing I always tell people, you know, if, if, I do believe in this quote, you know, like real genuine love, just like God's love, it doesn't fail. Yeah. It does never fail. If the love is real, it does not fail. Right. Mm-hmm. And people like people don't know the difference between love and mistreatment, love and cheating, love mm-hmm. and and um and, and lying and and you know all these toxic behaviors and people mix the both. Like no, the reason why that person doesn't doesn't care about you is not because of lack of love. It just they just don't care about you. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. the that's no, truth it, hard, yeah. it, it has nothing to do with love. It's just that person does not care about you. If they would, 
And like you said, I'm telling you, ladies, we're watching this. If a man cares about you, he's going to make it clear and evident. Mm -hmm. Absolutely clear. Like, when, like coming to, this is coming from a guy. Like, if I see somebody I like, I'm going to make it absolutely clear. Like, you got my attention. Yeah. So that and, statement of, like, if he wanted to, he would. That's like. Yeah, accurate. exactly. Yeah. If, if he wanted to, if he wanted you to be in his life, you would. Period. Right. Right. So, but like I said, <laughs> make sure you guys know the difference between love and attachment. Uh, make sure that like love always comes within you. Something you would give to somebody else because we care about that person. And people that really love you, care for you, they'll reciprocate. They will like they, they're not going to be shy. They're not going to leave you in confusion. <laughs> they're not going to leave you in like get, second guessing yourself. Mm -hmm. like, and that's like, that's always a sign right there. That's always like a red flag. Like if you're second guessing somebody's intentions for you, you know, always do the like the, the practical route, which is communication. That's yeah. one thing I always say: communicate first, right? Because sometimes. Yet a lot of people don't realize men and women, we show our love different. We have different love languages. Mm -hmm. So sometimes yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so that's so true. We have to, sometimes men we do things that you may never understand. Like you brought a perfect example, like liking pictures of other girls. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of men out there that just, just do it because they're men. But <laughs> yeah. Not this, but so you have to ask them and then communicate that with them. Hey, I see you like a lot of girls. What does that mean? Does that mean you like other girls? Does that mean there's uh you're just doing that but if i ask you to stop because you care about me would you stop it mm -hmm. a lot of people don't and then, and then he might turn back to you oh i'm sorry i didn't know you really that's something that you really care about that you yeah. you worry about i'll stop it because like i i love you yeah. i care for you mm -hmm. right but many people don't have that conversation yeah. <laughs> they just oh he's liking other girls picks oh my god he's a cheater yeah. he's a player he doesn't like yeah. love me yeah so this all communication is key but yeah make sure you guys know the difference between uh, love and attachment because you know, uh, you, sh you know, if you if you're only happy because of somebody else, uh, uh, if your happiness is, is, is dependent on somebody else's how how they treat you, that that's a sign that you're mm -hmm. you're, you're attached to that person. And uh, and usually, if you're attached to a person, the other person once he is aware that you're attached to him, what happens? They're gonna treat you like that. You know, they're yeah. gonna treat you because because they know they know that you're attached to him. Most people they're gonna take advantage of you. Uh, because most people that are good hearted, they love you, they won't take advantage of that situation. So just know, make sure you know the difference between that. That's my thoughts on that. Um, and like I said, if they don't care, like that's one thing I always say to people, if they don't, if they don't show it, they don't, if they don't show uh, their love, if, they, if uh, they don't take care of you, like just drop them, move on. Move on, just cut. <laughs> Scissors. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> just cut them, cut them from your roster. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was an athlete joke that was an athlete joke that, wow, that, was, so good. that was good cut him you're the general manager you're the coach you're the general manager cut him wow, <laughs> I don't get, I get the wrong perception we'll get, we'll get a roster no I don't have I don't have a roster you know <laughs> that was just an athlete joke guys that was an athlete yeah. joke <laughs> yeah like I said people that care about you they'll show it you know, it's real. It's they're reciprocated. You know, people that care about you have real attention for you. They love you. They're gonna reciprocate it. You will never have to question, you know, their their decisions because they like I said, when people really care about, it, they'll make sure they really want to make sure that you that they want to be part of your life. You mm -hmm. know, people that don't want to be part of your life, you know, they don't like I said, they're not gonna be part of your life. Yeah. So you don't really have to do anything. It, it, mm -hmm. People just you attract the people, the right people for you. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's my thoughts on that. Anything you want to add to that? I know that was kind of, I know my little jokes in there, but. No, no. <laughs> I mean, just quickly, like, it's draining when you yeah. like, give energy to someone that isn't reciprocating that. Like, you're constantly yeah. pouring out, but they're not filling you. Yeah. So, it's like, you're constantly getting drained out. So, why why even bother? Yeah. That's why you got to cut, cut. Cut, Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. So, um, I do want to talk about. Um, social media and uh the false reality of being happy on social media i know a lot of, i know you mentioned a lot of people say hey why are you always so happy on social media you know because you know i know because uh, i love your page by the way you're doing your thing on your page uh -huh. um <laughs> so i know i know you mentioned a lot of people reach out to you and say hey you're always so happy on social media mm -hmm. uh, i want to be like you i want to be you and then you have to tell them no like you have to give them the hard facts and the reality yeah all right so yeah, let's, yeah so uh, let's talk about that I mean, like, ultimately, like, social media, like, we just post our life, we just show, you know, it's like we pick and choose what we want people to see, and obviously, we don't want to show people 
the negative stuff or the hard part, but also um, what I try to do is also be, yeah, I'm also like, I post the good stuff, but also I try to be like real about it. Like I'm happy now, but because I did all of this, you know, mm-hmm. um, because I went through certain things, but yeah, like, like some people would, you know, swipe up or comment saying like, hey, be you. like, you're always so happy. Like, why are you so happy? And I tell them, I'm like, I'm not actually like, I remember telling this one person, 80% of the time I'm happy, but the 20% I'm like down bad and I'm sad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, or I'm in my fields or, you know, I'm just not always at a hundred percent all the time. I'm not always like radiating positivity and whatnot, but because social media makes you think that way, um, that someone is, um, always happy or positive, especially when like, um, like you see you, your favorite influencers or celebrities or whatnot, they're like living their best life. You really don't know what they're going through until, you know, like something happens later on the road and they open up about it. But but something that I like to tell people is like you never know what people are going through behind the scenes mm-hmm. and um it's like what what they may post never really is what's truly happening mm-hmm. um and I just think like social media at least you know at least one person can just be that that's what I'm trying to do with I guess with my Instagram is mm-hmm. yeah I'll post something that like I'm, I'm happy but also like in my caption I'm like I I tell them how it really is and like what's going on in my life or like a daily motivation, but it's always try to, I'm trying to be real and authentic with my social media now because I see things on social media that trigger me in terms of like, wow, like they're living the life that I want to live in or they're living the life that I want. But at the same time, I'm like, what are they going through? You know, like not always like happy all the time, you know, Mm -hmm. this one couple that I just saw on TikTok, they just got a divorce or they're splitting up, but I thought they were like everyone's favorite couple because they were built off just joking and having fun and whatnot. But in reality, there's like struggles that they go through behind the scenes and whatnot. But but like you said, like not always, not everyone can always run out a hundred all the time. Yes, my motto is to you know look at the good in every situation and have that positive mindset. But at the same time. It's never always at a hundred. It's mm-hmm. sometimes, sometimes I do get in my feels like everyone's human. Everyone has emotions that they deal with. But um, the best thing that I that I can say is when you do get in those like states of like not always happy or positive or whatever, it's like your emotions are valid, but also don't let them linger. Don't let them take hold. You know, don't let that consume you. Just find the root of that of why you feel that way, and then try to let it go and um you know think try to fill yourself up with you know positivity as much as you can but Mm -hmm. that's what I got to say about that (laughs) I want to ask you have you ever posted have you ever and this is something I feel like happens a lot of people have you ever posted a picture of yourself trying to look happy but you're you weren't really happy at that moment um I feel (laughs) maybe maybe like on snapchat because it's like really easy just to you know, take a photo just send it to someone yeah but i don't think i've like, ever posted something that wasn't like have you ever have you ever uh, let me clarify like have you ever have you ever tried to portray like how was there ever a moment in your life where you weren't really happy but you tried to portray that image on social media and to make it seem like you weren't happy but in reality you weren't have you ever done that before because i feel um, like this like you weren't really happy, but you, but you, you, you just wanted people to, uh, to, you wanted that perception of people to feel like that, to know that you're happy, but you weren't really happy. But you wanted people to think like you're happy. Have you ever done that before? I think maybe to an extent, but at the same time, I don't think so because like I try my best to like flex. You know, how, you know how people flex for success. You know how people like try to act like I try to look like success. A lot of people would try to look like they're successful, but they're not really successful. <laughs> <laughs> people yeah. flex all the time. So have yeah. you, ever, you ever done that, like any kind of level regarding happiness? Like just, you weren't really happy, but you just wanted people to think that you were happy just because. Probably like, not more so like recently, but I guess a couple months ago, I was like, just going through it. I was like, you know, not getting a lot of hate, but when I was making that transition of posting more fitness and motivational stuff, like when my content was changing and whatnot, um, <clears throat> I internally I was like I was so broken and yeah. um I just felt 
hurt, a lot of hurt. And I was like, why don't people, not that she liked, it was just my thoughts literally in my, yeah. head, my overthinking yeah. and whatnot. And I was like, sad. There are moments where I was like crying and whatnot, or the fact that, um, like, I guess I'm not lonely, but because I'm back home and I'm not playing volleyball and I'm doing com- something completely different than what all of my other peers are doing. It gets mm-hmm. lonely because not a lot of, a lot of people are not doing what I'm doing mm-hmm. um, right now in my age. And um, so that gets lonely because I see things on social media and, but I would post saying like, I'm living my best life. You know, I'd post all my successes and act, you know, like things yeah. that I'm doing, but in reality, I'm like not, but then, yeah. I guess recently though, I have started to be more open about that and be like, you know, you, what you see right now, all you, all you see is the motivational stuff, you know, me, what I'm doing now, but you don't see all the sacrifices I had to do, like give up my sport or, you know, all those times I was like crying in a car because I'm like so lonely, you know, or whatever or yeah. thoughts consume me, mm-hmm. but but every time I post like those daily motivational stuff, I usually talk to myself. So it's kind of like, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's in a way like I'm helping other people, but I'm also talking to myself in those posts as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Have you ever posted um, a video that a vulnerable video, a vulnerable video about yourself or a picture about yourself? Have you ever done that before? Like of me crying or something? No, no, crying. You don't have to or cry. Just, just like, like vulnerable, like open. Like just, just being open with your feelings, with your thoughts, uh, how you truly feel at that moment. Have you ever done that before? Yeah. Well, uh, not always, but like a lot of the time. Um, a lot of the times I do. When you posted like, your first when you posted your first one, uh, what was the reaction from uh, many people? What was the reaction of the, of the people? Um, that they needed to hear, which is why I keep doing it now. Um, it's just like they needed to hear that or like, thank you, you know? or just a lot of support, a lot of support yeah. people, because like I said, like, you don't know what people are going through, but yeah. it's like the little things, you know, or just saying like, wow, I guess one of the first posts that I posted was about, and like my, when I started to change my stuff up, uh, was I think about my sports slump. So when I stopped playing volleyball, like I still had fitness, like I would still work out and whatnot, but at the same time, I wasn't as disciplined as I used to be. I wasn't kind of like taking care of myself as I, as I used to in the past. Cause like my life Mm -hmm. just changed and transitioned. So I fell into the slump of not really taking care of my body or my, my mental health. And I kind of was open and vulnerable on my Instagram about that. And then so many people who have felt the same way of like that post-sport slump when, when you're not an athlete anymore, what do you do with your time and your freedom? Mm-hmm. Right? When you don't have those, those planned schedules for you or those planned workouts, you know, like your day is not planned out for you. What do you do with your time and whatnot? So I got a lot of support from that. So, so yeah. Yeah. Did you, so uh, when you made that video, was it like, was it like in the heat of the moment you just made it or did you like plan it? Um, Oh, sorry. Did you say video? I it was no. When, when, yeah, when you made that first video and you were talking about that, that vulnerable video about you not playing sports no more. When you made that video, was it was it was it when you made it? Was it like was it when you posted it? Was it like just a heat of the moment? You made that video and just posted because you were feeling that way, or was it like something you planned? You were like, you know what? I need to be more vulnerable. Be open on my on my platform. Let me make a video like this. A, a planned, I guess. A plan. Uh, okay. Yeah. It was more so in terms of like gathering my thoughts and yeah. else, um, and then sharing it. Yeah. But I, yeah. But it was, a, it was a photo and a, it was the caption was okay. my, my whole ordeal. Got you. Got you. Got you. No, no, got you. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I think that's uh, people, you know, um, I feel like nowadays people like take social media too seriously or like Social media is the reality, and reality is not their <laughs> reality is no longer mm-hmm. real life no more. They think real mm-hmm. life is social media, but people yeah. don't realize that social media is just like a highlight of people's lives. It's not real life, mm-hmm. and uh, and also people you know also social media is just a portion of that individual. It's not that, that you know it's not the real individual. That's just a portion of, of who they are. But we don't really see the entire oh. character. Yeah, like so. Um, I think that's something that people just need to realize that. Uh, like social media is beautiful. It, it connects people. Mm-hmm. To, it connects with all with people, but I feel like that's also like it's like a double edged sword. 
the great about social media, the great the great thing about social media is it connects us with all people. Yeah. The bad thing about social media is it connects us with all people. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's it's good and bad at the same time that's why i feel like self-awareness is key uh but yeah that's something for everybody out there just make sure you're happier in real life than you are on social media mm-hmm. all right i know and i know it's sometimes for influencers it's you know i know a lot of people have the perception that influencers like it's great and it's easy that their life is easy their life mm-hmm. is there's no adversity no no conflicts in their life but influencers you know it's really really hard for them especially because they want to, you know, especially if you need to be in the motivational game, if you want to empower people like you, you want to help people, empower people, encourage people. So people have this perception of you that you're just like this happy, wonderful, mm-hmm. you know, motivated, energ- energized bunny girl all the time, <laughs> all the time. But you know, so it's like they put you on this pedestal so they don't feel, they, they, they don't compare you like, 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 like them, but they don't realize like how we're all human beings. Like we're all going through our own things. And, uh, uh, it's really, really tough, especially if you're trying to empower people and then you're going through your own, uh, mm-hmm. your own adversity. So yeah, that's something I just want to say to everybody out there. Uh, just put, make sure that you're happy in real life mm-hmm. than in social media. Yeah. yeah. And stop taking social media seriously. <laughs> mm-hmm. exactly. <laughs> exactly. For sure. Yeah. And, yeah. And don't judge people based on social media. I want to, I want to ask that. Do people, uh, have you ever met people, um, that know you on social media, that see you on social media, but they, and they had this negative perception about you because of the social media. But then when they met you in real life, they're like, oh, I didn't know you were like this. Have you ever had that experience before? No, not personally. If anything, I hear from like my brothers. Yeah. And, like, uh, like in terms of, I guess, girls. Um, Cause I, I really want to like reach girls. <laughs> yeah. But it's so funny. Cause like, that's not my target reach it's it's crazy and have you ever have have you ever looked at your like your uh um insights on your on your page and see like the demographics is it more men or more women more men so i'm just like you you gotta cut the girls then go for the men (laughs) (laughs) i know know. like you gotta go with the flow we just talked about like go with i know go with literally go with the flow but it's it's crazy because like a lot of i mean i post like my workouts or whatever and um it's just like you know it's for girls for the most part I'm like I want to help out girls or whatever talk to them you know blah 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 but I that's so right it's so funny because like the people that I want to help is the people that like they just reject me so I'm like okay yeah but, but I guess like but my brothers have, have told me I'm like dude like hit up your girls like you know like tell them to follow me so I can like you know send some workouts or whatever and they're like Bonnie they're intimidated by you and I'm like why yeah. like no like you know I, you know you know girls but, you know g- girls like very they're very competitive when it comes to like other girls yeah all right so like you know that's you know it's that's how you guys are so it sucks and yes yeah, so, well that's not that's a suck it's just, it's just reality, <laughs> it's reality but, like, it's, that sucks though because like I yeah mean, just you know but that's how it that's it that it, it yeah. is how it is um just but make I, content for the men. Just make the con- that that content the men want. <laughs> you know what content they want. <laughs> yeah, I do. You gotta go with the market. You know what? What you know? The market will tell you yeah, what you the need to do. The insights are telling me exactly. Yeah, it's telling you. Like my like my demographics are uh, like nine percent women who who watch my my content. So mm-hmm. I'm aware of that. So I, I always make oh. top content. That's, <laughs> I make content that's relatable to women because it's not what you know. It's not why I what, what I want. It's what it's what the market is telling me. So mm-hmm. I gotta I gotta adjust to it. You know. Yeah. No. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So yeah, all the men out there, they're just waiting for you to come back to us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. But yeah, so that's something that I learned really like recently. I'm like, okay, well. You know what? This is my advice. I don't know if you ever made a video. Make a video about something about what men go through and try to and make a video about that i'm telling you and see how that resp- and see the response when you post that okay like you know yeah. hey man you know men like, i don't know you have to figure it out but just like whatever men are going through, just make a video that empowers men like hey man i know you guys did this this and this and just speak some positive or love to that video yeah. and see how and then just test it out and see how that goes maybe that's the video that goes viral you know maybe we'll see maybe. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> that <but> yeah. happens. <laughs> All right. Um, I do want to go into uh, social media. Let's go. I know we talked about happiness. Let's go into love. And uh, I know the biggest thing that you you were mentioned before how social media has corrupted dating, um, and why girls uh, stay single for a long time. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's let's dive into that. So, uh, why do you believe that social media has corrupted dating? Uh, because <clears throat> one, I think, just makes it so like. Oh, someone someone made a video about this, and it just popped in my head. Disposable, right? It just makes everyone disposable if that makes sense yeah you're constantly looking for the next person like if someone doesn't like you then like okay well the next i have the i have someone to like well, you know i can find someone else you know um it's easily i can find someone easy after you if that makes sense like yeah. for example, it's like the person that i watch he's the idea of like tinder you know like, oh if you don't like me okay fine like i got other people to swipe with who like i can match with you know, it just makes people easily disposable, not disposable, I thought that's the wrong word, um, or like accessible, if that makes sense, or like just waiting for like the what's next. Yeah. Um, and it's like, and it just doesn't make you, um, yeah, just <clears throat> like easily, you know, yeah. that game, it's like the, the game is, um, the game has changed. The game has definitely changed. Um, and also, like we, what we just talked about like not everything's real on social media so when people look at a couple and they're like oh my god i want that that's cool blah 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 you don't see like the bigger picture of it you know so mm-hmm. i feel like a lot of people are romanticizing a lot of things um in a relationship but they don't always see the true realness rawness of it of like you know the struggles of a relationship or like the raw and realness that goes that happens in like a relationship but all they see is the, the dates and you know all the good things that come with it but never the struggle so I feel like that's another thing too um what else what else um do you, do, you, do you feel like do you feel like the problem I want to ask you do you feel like the problem is it's too many options or do you feel like the problem is people are no longer seeking commitment no more I think it's too I think it's a little bit of both I think the options one is definitely yeah real that one's definitely a big thing um because uh, i think and going along with like the commitment i think um people are scared to get into a relationship because of the fear of what that other person is doing so for example like i'm just gonna use me as an example like i'm gonna continue to talk to these other guys because i think that guy is also talking to other guys or entertaining other people and he probably isn't but I'm going to continue to play my game because I'm scared of being hurt or I'm scared of yeah. like, you know, the idea of them doing something as well. So it's kind of like in a way, um, like, like the lack of commitment and just, yeah, like what you were saying. And yeah. I want to ask you when, uh, are you like, <clears throat> when it comes to the way you date, are you very progressive? Or are you very old school traditional? I'm <laughs> aggressive. <laughs> um wait, what does that even mean uh i would like say, like what it was like the like you know traditional means like you you are very traditional like back in the day like i want to just talk to one person one person like monogamy i, want, I just want to talk to one person and uh even the talking stage is like that's we when in the beginning to the end it's just me and you that's that's the old that's the traditional way right the talking yeah. stage where we can commit to each other there is no talking to other people even mm-hmm. in the talking stage, even in all the way through um, when you guys, you know, get married and everything, live happily ever after. The modern, the modern dating is like, you no, know, I'm a t- in talking stage. I'm still talking to entertaining other girls. You're still entertaining other guys. Mm-hmm. And we're just, we're still talking to each other and we'll figure it out along the way if we, if it's going to work out. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then, and we leave it up to chance. If, if this is what life wants us, if, it, if life wants us, you'll we'll figure this stuff out. Yeah. I would and, say- uh, so are you traditional? So like you, um, you just prefer to make it clear in the beginning and you guys are very, from the get go, it's just mm-hmm. me and you. Yeah. Yeah. And especially like right now, definitely just more so. Um, but like, I guess like last, even like last year though, I was 
that person that would like entertain everybody and like talk to multiple people but it was never serious and I already knew that because the other the other guys were doing the same thing with you know we were just entertaining each other for whatever reason but when I did find a person that I wanted to be like that I wanted to like commit to or that I was intentional with I like dropped everyone and was only focused on that one person okay so yes okay all right and um and you, like I said, you, the, uh, you feel like that um, you're afraid to get commit because like, you, you don't want to get hurt, rejected, whatever. That, I, I mean, yeah, that, but also, I just know, I feel like my standards are too high. What? What, was, <laughs> what do you mean standards are too high? Um, Elaborate. Like, for example, like my dad, he, okay, like, I was born. What are we, what are we, what are your standards? By the way, what are you? What's your stuff? Like, what do you look for in men? Like, what do you, what's, what's the must haves to, to be even given the opportunity to access? I guess like, the easiest way to put it, like, a man of God, like, literally a guy with faith, a guy who, um, who knows God, who, you know, not just saying, like, not like just a Christian guy or whatever, you know, but man a guy of God? actually pursuing God and a guy that's really strong in his faith, mm. you know, doesn't, fold or whatever you know not just you know gonna entertain the world but really just actively pursuing god knows his purpose blah blah blah. okay what other what else <laughs> and then i guess the other things are um like i want to really big on fitness and just like a healthy lifestyle so okay so so fat fat guys no chance <laughs> I mean, healthy lifestyle, like someone I can go to the gym with, and then, you know. And no, let's keep it, let's keep it real. Let's keep it. You guy, you want a guy that's, you know, like some type of shape, but not not obese. Yes, like that. yes in shape, definitely. So fat, um, so guys, fat, obese, no, no go. Sure. Okay. <laughs> No, this is, this is yours. Sure. Yeah. You gotta be clear. You gotta be clear. All right, cool. Okay, so man um, of God has to be in some type of shape and has, likes to be in a healthy lifestyle. Okay. That, Anything else? And I'm just, I mean, those are like just the big things that I look for because, like, <clears> I think the first one in general, like the man of God, like, I just know. And that's why I think like I haven't been in a relationship with like a guy is because that standard has already been set. And a lot of the guys just want to. Like just you know, hook up. Like hook up culture is so real nowadays. Yeah. And and I don't want that. Like I don't want to just hook up with people. Like I want. I'm like intentional with people. I want to have a genuine relationship. But because hook up culture is so prominent in this generation of dating, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then it makes it super, super hard. Sure. Okay. So so your standards. Uh, anything else you want to add to that? Like you know, finances, nothing, job, career, no. Um, I mean, if you're doing what you love, I mean, if you're walking in your purpose, then can he be? Can he be broke? No. If he's broke, broke, would you date him? Um, if he's trying in life, if, if he's, no, broke, no, he's not trying. He's broke. Not playing he's just, games like he's day. down bad. Like he's down bad. No, he just doesn't care. He's just playing video games all day. And oh heck, no, 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 no. Way. Any someone with purpose, someone who like what if he, what if he's like, what if what if he's like a man of God and healthy lifestyle, but he doesn't. No, that, no doesn't that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. God would not do that. He, they would not be down bad like that. He, he goes they to would church be every Sunday. <laughs> walking. <laughs> All right. Okay. So he would he know to, what they want, and so they he has to have. Them. He has to have some type of career, mm-hmm. or like like doing something, doing something with this life, doing something with this life. Yeah, goal driven, goal driven, and like I'm, like I like to just like elevate. I'm always on like. I'm always striving for like success. Like I'm always trying to like do what's next. Like trying to elevate. Okay. Like, I need someone to like elevate with me and like. Okay. You know, like spiritually, mentally, physically grow. With each other. And finan- and financially. Financially, financially. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. So he can be broke, but as but he's if he's working on something. He's working like, on if he's like. If he has he, a plan. He has a plan. They have to be, you know, striving for something. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. All right. So. And that's your only, and that's your standards, right there. Those are my standards. Is that, that, that's your real standards. Is that your like real, real standards? Or this is more, more. To it? I mean, yes, yes. Okay. Does height, <laughs> ma- does height, does height matter? Does height matter? 
Oh, okay. Now we're going. Now we're going. <laughs> now being us being real, like does hype matter? No, that's, no, we're being real. Okay. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> What's your hype? What's, hype? What, what's, what's the hype that he has to be this hype? You know, and he has to be taller you know. than me. He has to be bigger than me. Like, you know, he can't. If he's the same, if he's the same height as you, don't go. It's just, you know, just. No, it's, 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 it's not. Wrong. It's not the wrong. No, so but same height like, as you. But then again, like I'm, if I'm, you couldn't be physically attracted to, if I'm not physically attracted to you, but your personality and like that attracts me. Then I would, I would, okay, like, okay, see what's up. But if the initial physical attraction, you, you gotta have to. You, so, have so to. I mean, I'm, I'm saying, to be honest, I want to ask you, you will be honest. If the guy is the same height as you, he, that's it. Doesn't matter what his personality is, no go. That's just tough, but like no. <laughs> <laughs> no, so so the same or shorter, doesn't matter. No. no. So what if it's a man of faith? Uh, works out lifestyle <laughs> and has a good career but he's like at the same height or shorter than you yes I mean <laughs> oh, that sounds so bad that sounds so bad but it's like shorter but he's always shorter than you but he has all those things that you want but he's shorter than you it's like one inch shorter than you you do you, yeah <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> oh, I, never know. I never know I never know but but it's a no, but I never know. You know, I can't. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. No, no, no. No, no, <laughs> no I feel like funny. I'm not funny, but that, that's good. It's okay. No, the reason I bring this up because I feel like this is this is the way I see it. The, why it's so hard nowadays for people to date. Um, number one, I feel like the date, the 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 code, like is a culture, you know, hookup culture. You mm-hmm. know, the 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 perception and the definition of commitment has changed within the the dating culture in today's in today's time so because back in the day you know back in the day when our parents lived when dating dating meant marriage yeah. that's what dating meant that's what when you date somebody you, you meant marriage like yeah yeah you know that's you know so um that was that was like the culture back then so like when a guy talked to a girl like everybody knew like my intention is to marry you you know there so everything has changed now in the culture where um, you know, now everybody's freedom. We have all these li- liberties and freedom for both men and women. Um, and uh, now dating doesn't, doesn't no, there's no, dating no longer means marriage. Dating just means dating. Yeah. You know, <laughs> dating means sex, means having fun, you know, whatever. But dating, doesn't, dating is no longer committed uh, to marriage. So that's, and that's the culture we are brought up in. So when we grow up, like when guys and girls also, like when we date somebody, nobody dates nobody no more. I mean, I would say not all everybody, but there's very few people. But most people, when you date somebody, you don't even think about marriage. Yeah. All right. And the p and the, and the, and, the, and and what's tough about it is the people that do that do want to get married and do want a long uh, uh, be in a monogamous, committed relation, a long term relationship. Uh, they have to, it's they have like they um they have to try to date people who don't. They have to try. They have to date people who don't want the same thing as them and especially the people the problem is like the, per, the people like you like you like you said you're traditional right the problem is and this is the reality is you know if you're very traditional you want a long-term relationship and you want to get married the problem is is the, the guy or the girl that you like may not have that and that's mm-hmm. the reality that you yeah. it's really it's, that's that's a pill it's really hard to swallow yeah no. but the, that the guy that you have eyes for or the guy or the girl that you have eyes for that you know you really yeah, you like you've really have a crush on that you really admire. Uh, the problem is he may not have that. Mm-hmm. And and uh, the reality is like, we have to find other people that may not meet your standards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but those are the people. So the people that are showing you commitment and the people that are showing you they want to get married with you, they may not fit the, the standards of what you have. Yeah. And and that's the and that's the reality. And that and that's the hard debate because we all have a guy and a girl in our lives, everyone knows this, that fits all the standards. Mm-hmm. And that's the guy we really, really want. But the problem is that guy or that girl doesn't want that. Um so the question is, what do you do? What do I do? What? Like I how do you know. how do we how do we figure how do how do we figure this out? How do we, what's the solution? I want to ask you, what's the solution? How do we how do you how would you if it was up to you like 
how would you, how do you, what, what's like, I guess, what's the solution to find somebody that kind of has their standards and also like wants to be in a long-term relationship? Cause that's, that's good. That's the question people are trying to figure out. I have my, my, my own opinion on that, but I want to ask you. Um, I don't know. I feel like we all like, for example, I have like two big things in my life. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, the one is like, the big thing about me is like faith. Like if you can, if we can meet me there spiritually, then like, mm-hmm. okay, then you can get me talking. Cause if you mm-hmm. look at the past people that I've talked to, they all don't look alike. They're all, mm-hmm. you know? So that's when he said, that, I was like, I don't know. I mean, like, this, like personally, no, but at the same time, like, I just don't know. Cause you can mm-hmm. attract, you can attract me. Um, like in terms of, I like, I love having conversations whenever. So if you can pick up my brain and get me and get me going, then it's like, and you really got me there. Right. And then I don't really look at the physical appearance anymore. If that makes sense. Um, oh, I didn't, oh, I didn't even, I didn't even mention that. I forgot to mention it. Does he have, does he have to be cute? Um, yeah, I mean, okay. I don't know. I, I mean, guess, I mean, when I say cute, like, does it have to be attractive to you based on how, the way you see it? Yeah. Okay. But okay. I feel like also, like what you like for example, there is there's people that I've talked to that you know that I had the intention of like dating, but I never committed to because I just knew it wasn't going to be long term with them. Um, that I didn't really find attractive at first, but because they like fit those my main standards. <laughs> yeah. Look past it and didn't even like didn't phase me. Yeah. So, so that's like one thing. Um, and I think one, like physically, like the physical attraction, I feel like that doesn't last. Yeah, it doesn't last because we yeah. evolve eventually. I'm going to look old and not the same. And, you know, that's not going to last. So mm-hmm. I think it's what's literally with inside the person, mm-hmm. their character, who they are as a person that really matters the most for me in the long run. Mm-hmm. And someone can attract me with their physical traits and their attributes, but can they sustain, you know, can they sustain me if that makes sense yeah like yeah go even past one month of just talking mm-hmm. um, so yeah, <clears throat> yeah the, I, I think the one of the, the, the reason why i asked you your standards right because i feel like this is the i think the biggest problem today and you know if you, if you have a thoughts on this you know uh let me know mm-hmm. um i think the biggest problem today is like people are not being honest uh about the reality of what the other of what they want out of the person or of what the other person of what the other what the opposite sex wants like like for example like a lot of people want like like if you ask if you ask many women right what do you want out of a relationship and they will always say like the surface level standards mm-hmm. <laughs> but they won't yeah. say like like if you ask women like you know any men too but like like you said what do you want out of a man does it this this and this but then in reality like they want a certain height certain thing mm-hmm. uh, certain specific specific height specific income or specific the thing mm-hmm. is people don't say that out loud Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So nowadays people are saying, hey, I want this, this and this and this. But the reality, the standards of what they're looking for, they're not being re- they're not being upfront and open with it. Mm-hmm. Which, I don't have nothing with standards. Like, everybody should have a standard. But the thing is, whatever standard you have, number one, like, you have to make sure you meet your own standards. And that's the problem. A lot of people have standards, but they don't meet their own standards. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I want a guy that's uh, God fearing, but you're not God fearing. <laughs> you know, yeah. you don't care yeah. about church. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. You want somebody that's successful, but you're not doing the same thing. That's the problem. And then the second thing is like being upfront with it. Like not pe- people are not being real. A lot of people say, I want commitment, right? But they don't live a commitment lifestyle, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. if you want, so people say like, I want commitment. And this is the biggest mistake I see a lot of people do is like people that like, if you want commitment in your life, if you want like, if you want to like, say, you, you want to be, you want to date somebody and get married with somebody, you just, uh, one of the biggest mistakes I see is people, Try to play the game everybody else is playing. So okay, everybody's talking to talking to multiple people. Okay, I need to talk about multiple people. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, like, if you wanna, if you want to a committed relationship, then you have to make sure you live and stay true to that. Don't change for the, because of the game. Be true with that, so that way other people. Because like I said, image is perception, right? Perception is reality, mm-hmm. right? So you can be like, say you like you want a traditional relationship where you just want to talk to one person, one person only, and you get to show love, each other love and affection and build a great life. Uh, but the thing is, is, a lot of times girls or guys, we all do the same thing. We want that, but then we try to play the game everybody else is playing, talk to multiple people. And once that word gets out to people that you're doing that, then you lose all credibility. That mm-hmm. nobody, not now, nobody will take you seriously. Oh, you, 
you don't really want uh, commitment because I know you talk to this guy, this guy, this guy. Yeah, so yeah. so I, I feel like it's really important. It's like you just said, that's what you want. You need to make sure that you you live that reality and live that truth. Mm-hmm. So that way the guys and the girls that are looking for commitment are looking around and say, wait, everybody's wait, she is making it very clear that she don't want to talk to multiple people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because like, cause like I said, we're all like men and women, we're all just, just like looking at each other mm-hmm. and, and look at how everybody moves, how everybody plays the game. And yeah, uh, I feel like people are uh, not being honest and, and because, of, they're fear, because of fear, because they're afraid, whatever. Mm-hmm. But like, if you really want a commitment, I know a lot of girls are, and guys too, they, they want a relationship. But if you look at the social media, that does not show that they want a relationship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. I know a lot of girls, like they have this, you know, you know, I don't, they have, if you look at their, if you look at their social media, they're like, I don't need a man. I'm happy being single, yeah. living the best life. Yeah. But deep down, deep down, like they want somebody to come and marry her. But yeah. as guys, when we see the social media profile, oh, that girl is just want to be single. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep it moving. For keep sure. it moving. Yeah. Does that make sense? So I feel like, yeah, I feel like people just need to be honest nowadays and be real. If that's mm-hmm. what you want, make sure you, number one, like make sure you reciprocate that, make sure you, you meet your own t- standards, mm-hmm. but also making it, make sure you live that lifestyle as well. Like if you want a committed relationship lifestyle, make sure that the way you move, the way you act and the way you carry yourself is in line with, with wanting someone to mm-hmm. like, like we always talk about before is like you are, you become like, we, uh, we attract what we are. Yeah. Uh, what what we do. So, uh, you you can want inside if you can want like a committed relationship. But if you act like a, somebody that doesn't want to be in it or a single, then then that's the energy you give out. And for men and women, they just feed off your energy. Mm-hmm. You know, and you wonder why you like attract guys like don't really, uh, because contrary is like popular belief. There's a lot of men out there that want commitment, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of women out there too that want commitment. But yeah. the thing is, like, because of this game that we play and the, and the culture and the perception, like. Mm-hmm. everybody's thinking everybody everybody's thinking that everybody's gonna bring everybody's playing a game mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but that, for, for everybody out there that's watching like you have to be like just be upfront like on your social media like if you have to if you have to write your profile looking for monogamy looking for to get married like even like be, <laughs> i'm telling you <laughs> i am telling you that will make a difference <laughs> oh my gosh yeah yeah put it out there but like i said we like i said put out the like perception like images perception is reality of what people people don't care what you are is how they perceive you mm-hmm. is how they perceive you is there is what they think about you so for men and those men and women out there, the guys out there that really want to be committed to you uh and they want to wife you up or they want to make you a husband doesn't matter but it's really hard for them to believe that that's that you're going to be committed if you don't live that lifestyle and i feel like that's a problem and if you do commit to, and if you do commit if you do find somebody like that i feel like a lot of people like like you mentioned it it's a, they're afraid of like making it that clear mm-hmm. yeah. like like if you like if you want to commit to somebody you just tell us straight up like hey i'm feeling you i want to i want to get in relationship with you but we i want to make it exclusive between me and you like you know my main focus and attention mm-hmm. and and make that clear for both sides and then they're like oh, okay cool we know we set the rules, we set the, we set the boundaries, we know what it is, and then we, and we go from there. But everybody's just afraid. To Everyone's assuming. Def- and- assuming, yeah, assuming playing this game. And then everybody just uh, also like having those standards, you know, those crazy standards that most people don't meet themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also, like, like, like I said, like, you know, you're like you said, the hype matters to you, right? Like, it's important to make that clear, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like for like even for guys too, like if you want a, a girl that looks a certain way, like body wise or healthy wise or lifestyle wise, make sure that's clear. But a lot of times what we do is like we want anyone, <laughs> yeah. and then all these and all these guys come to you like, oh, I'm God fearing, <laughs> but he's shorter than you. <laughs> no, it's not even that. It's, that. it's like they that because like faith is like I'm really ex- you know. I express that like in all social medias. I'm like, yeah. you know, I'm just authentic with it and like open about it. And it's so funny because all of the guys, like they would like, try to like reach me with that. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then once we start talking about it, it's like nowhere near, I mean, it's not like, it's not real, but I'm like, ah, but you're, you're trying to, uh, okay. Okay. Like it doesn't just add up, you know? Yeah. But it's, but it just be real and honest and communication yeah and like even from the very beginning it's like if you don't want to like waste your time yeah be clear be clear 
just know the intentions, you know, know the intentions of the person. I, at the end of the day, it just comes to like, you don't want to get drained. You know, you don't want to um, keep entertaining someone that doesn't reciprocate that same energy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. yeah and, and, and like, like I said, don't assume that person, the way, like, the way you see things, don't assume that they see it the same way, right? Mm -hmm. So if, when you say commitment, you have to define what commitment means. Some people say me, <laughs> commitment wow. means like one month. That's so true. <laughs> but you know what, uh, though, at the same time, I feel like because of social media, like nobody yeah. knows how to talk to each other. Like literally oh, yeah, of course. nobody knows how to talk. Of course. <laughs> so, exactly. Like you got to be, the more, this is the one thing I always say, the more when, uh, man, I don't want to smell, I don't, I don't want to sound like a player, but... <laughs> No, I am not. I'm not, by the way, just put it out there, but it's going to sound like it. When people, the way you know somebody's intention of you is they're more very specific. Mm. The more, the more, they, the more they generalize things, that's how you know they're not really, the more general they are regarding anything, that, that, that's how you know that they're not really interested or they don't want to commit to you. Mm. Because people that we, when, you, when you know somebody really loves it, they're very, they'll, they'll make it really clear, very specific. This is what I want. Right. Yeah. This is what I want. This is what I want to do with you. This is what I want with you. This is what I want to do with you. This is how I want to treat you. They're very specific, you know, you know, um, about the relationship. Like they make it clear, look, I want to be committed to you. And when I say commitment, I'm the only one you're gonna to talk to. Mm -hmm. There is yeah. no other person. That, yeah. That's just making it really, really clear. A lot of people say, Are we committed? Like, what are we? Like, what are we? You know, when you know when people say, like, what you know, I've ever heard of that conversation when people say, like, they have to have that kind of, girls have to have the conversation with that guy, what are we? Yeah, yeah. I literally talked about that. <laughs> yeah, what are we like? And that see, that's but they'll keep you in that like that friend zone or that like that, that general area. What do you, what are we? Of course, like what what do you mean? We're friends. You know, they'll just keep it. Friends, keep but it, it's like but act like yeah. a couple. But they're, they're not gonna they don't want any specifics, right? Because when you make it specific, it's gonna force them to commit. It's gonna force them to make exactly. a decision. They don't want to make a they don't want to make a decision, they don't want to commit. So they'll just they'll, they'll try they they would try in order effort to keep it in like it's like a dangling a, a a piece of meat in front of you you know just hoping you know yeah. Yeah. and that's how and that's why they want to keep it but you got to get yourself out of it and if you understand like like you say when, if somebody wants you to make it very specific that's one thing i always say like when i if i like somebody if you like somebody you make it very specific what they want that's mm -hmm. a that's a that's a sign right there that somebody's not really interested in you they just keep the, everything generalized what are yeah. we? Oh, we're just we're just friends, you know. We're friends, you know. I like you, man. We're, I like you as a friend. I really, you know, have, uh, you know, I like your, I like your, you know, I like your, I like uh, spending time with you. Like they just keep it in that generalized area. They don't, they won't say specific words like commitment, like I want you. They'll just keep your hopes up. So that's a sign for everybody out there. That, but also what I think because people can tell me everything. Like I've had people also like tell me all the right things, you know, t like. They said all the right words. Whoa, they whoa, 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 what words? What things? You know, like, oh, I want you. Like, you're like my dream person. And, but like, literally, like. See, but see, that, that's, a, that's a generalized thing. No, but then going down the list, but then like being specific about it, you know, but just it's like they see all the right words, do all the things. But I feel like the important thing is like the words and the actions have to align. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reciprocate. Like, be so just, quick with whatever they say. Yeah. But like, their actions have to like align with their words and with what they're yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah. And then, they, like I said, yeah. And then, when, and then when you do want to make it like specific or committed or make it real, they'll try mm -hmm. to like keep you in that that the zone or that friend zone. You might call it friend zone or that journalized area. That, like, there's no specific like, especially what are we in a relationship? You know, we're uh, we're friends. You know, we're friends. <laughs> like, what does that what does that mean? It's like, they'll try to like you know deflect it. You know, try to deflect it. Yeah. So, so like you said, I think that like what uh what we just talked about, uh making sure that their actions align, right? Making sure their actions align with their with the with their words, uh making sure that whatever they the standards they have, like they reciprocate, what they, whatever they ask out of you, make sure yeah. to reciprocate that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And uh, and make sure that it's it's clear. Make sure it's clear, right? Mm -hmm. Make sure it is clear. They don't keep you. They don't give you like generalized answers how they feel about you like they ask them, how do you feel like i feel good <laughs> yeah that's so true. You know, or, or they'll like give or they'll, or they'll reflect it by asking you questions what, what do you feel like i what do you what, what do you think and, you know mm -hmm. that's how they get you in your feelings yeah yeah all right yeah. so okay that was a good talk 
Yeah. So, okay. It's hard. Hey, everybody out there. I know it's hard out there. You know, I know the game is hard. Uh, <laughs> but you have to learn. You have to know the game. You know, uh, you have to know the game. And like I said, that's what that, that's the best thing I always say to people. Be true to yourself because you, you will attract who you yeah. are. So if you try yeah. to be something you're not, if you try to do what everybody else is doing. And, and uh, by the way, if, if you try to do what everybody else is doing, just look at their life. Like if, if, are they married? Are they getting long-term relationships? Not, probably not. Then you shouldn't want to follow what everybody else is doing if those people are not uh, attracting love. So just be you. Be yourself and make it clear. Um, but yeah, because that's what social media is. It's just like a this gray area. Yeah. As of, of assumptions, of assuming, and uh, you have to be really clear. Okay, cool. Um, I do want to. Uh, I want to ask you for you for. Uh, I know you. I, I know you talked about being single for a long time. You know, um, for a lot of girls out there that are being single, uh, what do guys have to do? It's like if you say the guy wanted to approach you, because you said about being single, you're afraid of somebody like being uh, breaking uh, their heart. I'm very interested to hear your perspective. There is a guy out there that wants to approach a girl that's been, you know, that has a big wall in her heart or is single. But he really cares for them. what, like how how should he approach that coming from for coming from your perspective? I'm just interested to hear. No, yeah, um, that's interesting. I guess be not patient yeah be patient but also just like I guess like for me um like if someone were to like try to come into my life and like break down those walls like that would like take time in terms of like I'm not gonna just be so easy if that makes sense just be so easy to just share everything because I'm like if I'm gonna be because that, that's where attachment gets that's where attachment yeah. is because yeah. if I reveal too much or give off too much not reveal sorry like open too much about my life then you have access to that part of my life you know like because then you know that and it's like I feel um certain people um like certain people like in that in that stage of like getting to know each other people kind of give too much too fast if that makes sense so um and <clears throat> person like is looking for that like if a guy wants that then that's when I kind of like, cut it off or whatever but like if a girl is like guarding her heart and just not really like, being you know too upfront about like everything about her feelings or emotions like give it time and like make her feel like she's um you know appreciated or like that that you are interested in her it's like that constant assurance but also at the same time, everyone has different love languages. Like mine's quality time. So it's just like, if someone is like spending time with me and it's just like, that's how yeah. I'm like. Oh, I do, you, do you prefer a guy to be very, be upfront? No, like, no, I would say. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you prefer a guy to be very assertive to you? Like, know what he wants. Know what he like wants. he comes, in, let's say a guy comes up to you, hey, I seen you, I seen you, I want you, I want to spend time with you. What's up? Do you prefer that guy? Because you say like, oh, do you prefer, or because you say like, you want a guy that's gonna take time, right? Mm -hmm. So do you? Because I feel like there's a. So yeah. do you do you prefer the guy? Do you prefer the guy that comes in like not really confident, like? No. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying is, because this is what I feel like. You know, when he, I feel like that you, as a guy, if you want to approach somebody, right, a girl, you have to make it really clear and be very confident in the beginning. Mm -hmm. and not and not be very uh unconfident and very uh unassertive because they, if you do that i feel like girls will put you in the friend zone because so i feel like don't go don't, don't go hey i want to be friends i want to spend time with you and and try to play like the uh the mm -hmm. uh the hope the hope route like you know yeah. just hoping things might work out yeah i feel like it's, it's better off just go up to her hey uh seeing you i think you're very beautiful I'm attracted to you. I want to spend time with you. When can we make that happen? <laughs> That's a hard question because I feel like it, it just depends like case to case. Now, but, really, but, 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 he, but he says it in a very confident but also very respectful manner. It, he just, he just, I mean, like, I would prefer that over someone who's just like... Yeah, no, I'm not trying to be, be like a douchebag, you know, just being come work yeah. over you and it sound like a, like, a, like a player. I'm not saying he came out to you in a very respectful way, but he just made it clear, like, look, I've seen you. 
I think you're cool. I think you're beautiful. I want to make it happen. Or yeah, no, that's good. That's really good. Because because I feel like like this is what I always feel like that if you if you try to if you don't if you go up to a girl that you really really like and you're not especially a girl that's been single for a long time and you don't make it clear, then she'll I don't she'll intentionally put you in the friend zone. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure that or just automatic. Yeah, that, that's have you true. have you put people in the friend zone before? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and let me ask you why do you why did you put it in the friend zone that's like looking back what, what did um, they do to make you to like uh just put you in the friend zone what's it the lack of like what, what did they lack they were one already my friend right um but when things when things when I felt like he started like me I was like oh okay but then when it was more so like people were putting things into my you know when like people would say stuff like oh yes you're so cute together blah blah, blah. And these kind of like start believing that but well, that's yeah. what happens when I started believing oh like maybe they're seeing maybe I should start seeing what they're seeing and I kind of like fell into that narrative yeah. but then as soon as like things started to like escalate in terms of like more serious I was like oh no and this is not what I want this is not what yeah not what I thought blah 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 it was big like no 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 and then I like, put him back in the friend zone um but yeah <laughs> have you been have you have you have you been put in a friend zone before for yourself somebody like a guy put you in a friend zone no oh nice <laughs> no <laughs> no yeah no that's a, that, that's what i i believe this, I, I believe also like i just believe like tell, i tell um you know guys all the time like just be confident and tell yourself and uh make it clear because it, even if it doesn't even if she says no at least she knows like your intentions Mm-hmm. you know at least he knows it at least he knows your intentions so that way just in case because sometimes because sometimes like, depending on the girls i feel like sometimes girls say no mm-hmm. just because they don't want to give you that satisfaction and, and they'll, but they'll teach you up later <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but there's some girls out there that are like, really prideful like you know they don't want to especially depending on the setting but uh but yeah, i feel like a lot of guys like yeah if you don't make you don't want to if you you're like you know if you if you act like a friend you can be treated like a friend you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, if you act like if you act act like uh, you know a potential one a boyfriend, then you gotta if you want to be a potential boyfriend, you gotta act like a potential boyfriend. You can't act like you can't be a, you can't want to be a potential boyfriend, but you act like a friend. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. That's true. Um, I don't know. I I, I don't know because every case is so different with me because I one a lot of the my like like my brother's friends or friends or whatever like. Like, I know they would have crushes on me, but it's like, I'm always like, you're my bro. Like, you know, like, you're my friend. Like, no. So it's always like automatic. Well, or, <clears throat> well I, yeah. I feel like, I feel like the love, I feel like, you know, how we have love, love languages, you know, I feel mm-hmm. like for, you know, if you ever read like human sexuality, like, you know, for women, like, you know, like one of the love languages that really attracts them is like confidence. You know, would yeah. you, I mean, do you, I mean, does that attract, is, like, from a guy that like, there's a confidence, does that make him attractive to you? I've been seeing no, meeting for, sure. for sure. Right? If anything, even if it's like, um, like I don't think of them the same way. It's like, also, it's like kudos to you for doing that. You know, like yeah. respect. Like yeah, I'm can't. sorry, but it's like you, no. Problem. You would you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want a guy that's looking for you for, for leadership. Yeah, no. no, <laughs> it's, no. Like, it's undecisive. Like he was asking you for everything. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So that's, how I, that's how I tell uh, guys on the top, like, you know, you, uh, be decisive and be confident. So it's kind of like... Put the, that, make, that knows what he wants. Yeah, and now he wants, right? And most girls like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, if, you, if you're kind of like submissive or very tentative, uh, very shy, then that doesn't equate boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah, equates no. friend zone. <laughs> yes. Yes. What, okay. When it, like when girls see like shyness, attempt, um, timid, being timid, being nervous, and being mm-hmm. unconfident that just in your mind it just registers for it yeah yeah <laughs> i mean at least for me because i know like i'm like, i don't have such a strong personality but like i, I know what i want if that makes yeah. sense and um but a but a guy that can like just take charge and, and just ch- literally like, take charge like that is very attractive or yeah. just, you know wording but like just more dominant yeah yeah attractive because if I'm yeah. rolling, if I if I like I have because I know a lot of girls like to have control or whatever, but like I'm not that type of person. Yeah. But in terms of like with like another person, mm-hmm. um, like I don't want to have like 
not say like i want a guy to be like okay no we're gonna do this or like we're yeah. you know take charge yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah. okay so, all, all right, right. Actually, it's funny that you said because like that made me realize a lot of things. Like, yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's. <laughs> no, and if like if if I'm too like too much in like I, if I have too much of a say, and it's like then I, I'm more dominant. And, yeah, and naturally, you go, like yeah. If yeah. if a girl if, if a girl feels like she's more dominant than you as a guy, I always tell this to everybody like she's gonna friends on you. It's kind of like and uh, to me for me yeah. <laughs> To me, it's like I don't. It doesn't sit no, right. I feel, I feel like it's. I feel like it's. I mean, like I said, and I feel like nowadays, the, many people don't like the word dominant. Dominant doesn't mean like, like, yeah. like, like. Uh, people use people nowadays. People like misconstrue dominance and associate with like abuse. No, like, you can be a dominant man and still be healthy and still mm-hmm. treat your woman. Um, uh, because sometimes I hear girls, like, I don't want a dominant man. But to them, dominant means control. Like these guys. That will be dominant with you, but they're still allowed. Like they'll like they'll communicate with you. Mm-hmm. They'll still let you be like in a healthy way. Yeah. But yeah. he'll just like, he'll just be out there. But he'll be dominant. Like, hey, I want you, I need you. Yeah. And, and this is you're the only person I want to be with. Just being that dominant in, in, in their intentions and how they feel and how they treat you. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes people like just as soon as they hear dominant when it comes to men, they just like think like it's like uh, controlling. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know, uh, and same thing for for men too. Sometimes when they hear emotional, for when that girl is too emotional, like they think when you say it's emotional, they think that girl's crazy. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> no, true. no, true. girls can be very emotional, but in a healthy way. You know, mm-hmm. because they're very that they want to connect with you in a, in a nice. You know, they're very open. They want transparency. Some girls just want transparency, but sometimes culture has like misconstrued like the the meaning of things nowadays when it comes to dating. Like commitment is no longer doesn't no longer mean marriage no more commitment just means dating having fun yeah. <laughs> yeah. all right yes all right and then the same thing with these uh these terms so yeah that's uh yeah so so well just, i guess for everyone out there if the girl has been single for a while has a big heart um a big wall then just be confident and attack that wall attack. <laughs> oh, head on. Climb, that, climb that wall climb that wall climb that wall <laughs> yeah if, but, it, it's kind of, if it doesn't if it's if a girl says no then it's like a no but it's like dude shoot or shoot you know like well, keep- well, well no no so no 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 this is the thing a lot of people don't know is <laughs> don't listen to what she said listen to her body language yeah her body language to tell you when a girl says no but look at her body language so true to, that is a word right there if because yeah. because like like this rejection is a built in is a built in mechanism of girls will, of course I mean of course like every girl is gonna say no because that's what's been like it's like um I used to do door to door sales right when you go to uh, sorry when I go to customers houses when I knock on the door it's already they're gonna say no in the beginning because this is what homeowners do to salespeople they're just gonna say no <laughs> so same thing with like when same thing when you approach a girl like they're always gonna say no yeah. uh, just because like the fact that you approach her. You know, yeah. you just want to, you just want to say, you have to say no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't just say, you can't say yes to every guy, you know. Yes. <laughs> that, I mean, that means no. That. Well, yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right. So, you have, so it's, it's normal for them to say no, but that, I think, I feel like I always tell like, just look at the way, the, the way they say no. Is it, if it's like, no, get out of my face. I don't, you know, call the cops. All right. That means, you know, but she says like, no, but you can see that, you can see there's something there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then you can work with that. All right. All right, cool. All right, so I guess the last thing I want to ask you before we close this, uh, before we wrap this up, um, you know, we had some great conversations, by the way, great topics. <laughs> yeah, no, that means a lot. <laughs> um, I want to, uh, I think one thing you asked us, uh, one thing you asked me was like, how do you know when, how do you know when to take the next step uh, when it comes to figuring out your life? Uh, we're talking about success now. So when I say success for me, Everybody out there that's listening, it means uh, it doesn't mean that you know uh, what society tells us what success means. I mean, society would tell us success means money. You know, mm-hmm. the more money you have, the more successful you are. Uh, for me, success means happiness, living within your purpose. You know, I do believe God created all of us for a specific purpose. Uh, it's our job to, to figure out what that purpose is. And I feel like once you, anybody in the world that reached uh, became a great person and make a difference and became the best version of themselves. They found a way to align themselves with that purpose. And then uh, they became, you know, the byproduct. I always say to people, when you chase happiness, when you chase your passion, when you chase your purpose, the byproduct, the byproduct of that is success. 
So when you do what you're meant to do, when you live within your purpose, when you become the person you were always meant to be, that God created you to be, then you're going to, all, all that stuff, it comes with it. It comes with it. All right. So, but that's, I want to ask you, and I guess that's, you know, how do you know when to take that next step? When you, when you, when you have an idea of what your purpose is and have an idea of what you want out of life, I know many people that are afraid to take that first step, but many people never take that, that step at all their mm-hmm. whole life because of that fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of missing out, whatever. There's, every, there's so many fears and reasons why people don't, don't do it. But, uh, but I guess that's the question. How do you know when to take that next step? I mean, I think like the scary part is always like the unknown, you not know, like the idea, because it's like we're always scared of leaving our comfort zone, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like to take that next step, we have to <clears throat> wait and it's really uncomfortable or we have to do something differently. You have to change something, right? Mm-hmm. That gets really scary and uncomfortable. But at the same time, I feel like when you know what's right, there's that there's that irk there's that sense of, there's also peace behind it as well um when I made like that drastic change in my life when all those signs of confirmations like were right in front of me it was scary like it was scary to make that decision because I didn't I didn't know what the future hold for me but I knew I had to do it because it was there was an overwhelming like it was it was scary but I knew I had to do it because there was so much peace behind it mm-hmm. which was like that's when I knew I was like oh I have to do it and it was comfortable but at the same time it was scary so I mm-hmm. feel like that fear is nothing what stops people but when you know it's kind of like when you know you know and <laughs> you just have to do it you just have to take mm-hmm. that step out and do it mm-hmm. um but but yeah Let's yeah see. yeah um my take on that is um how do you know when to take the next step um this is what I always tell people you don't you just mm-hmm. take the step. <laughs> yeah, Dude, you don't, you, you don't, you don't, you, you're not supposed to know. Um, and that's, and that's the thing, you know, um, when it comes to our life, um, life is a journey. I always tell people life is not a, pl- like life is not a place. It's not a destination. It's not a specific person. It's, it's a journey that we take. And, and the journey will always reveal itself as we take those steps forward. Mm-hmm. You know, if you don't take a step forward, then you're never going to live that journey and you're never going to find out where your life is supposed to go. So you have to have some kind of faith and, and just take that step, not, not knowing if things are going to work out. But that's why I always tell people, like, you have to look within your inner compass. Your inner compass is that voice within you. And that's God. That's how God communicates. That's really my opinion. Yeah. That's how he communicates to us is that voice. Like your, your inner compass, that voice that mm-hmm. knows you, that you're a real version of yourself. Listen to that. Like, listen to your heart, to your soul, to your spirit. It will know where do where you need to be but you just gotta take that step um because like i said there's no there's no guarantee there's no guarantee the things are gonna work out and the only honestly the only way you can figure out uh, where you need to be is to try it because part of life is failing so mm-hmm. take that step and if you go just like anything in life right just like uh gps i always tell people gps if you take a wrong uh a wrong street eventually you're gonna figure out that street is the wrong way <laughs> And what do you yeah, do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you get right back on. Then you, yeah, we we adjust, right? Wow. And that's and that's what life is. So, um, no, not you know, you have to you have to take a step, and 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 just like you said, when you want to figure something out, just try. That my 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 advice to everybody out there is try, like try as many things as possible, and then what you figure out is you figure out the things you don't like, and then you and then you figure out the things you do like, and then when you, once you figure that out. Uh, do a trial and error and you really find something you're passionate about it aligns with your morals or values or and your beliefs and who you are as a person then that's it when you know okay this is this is it this is it and then um it's full goal from there yeah. uh, but you know, like i said yeah uh there is a price to be paid you know that's something you've always said nothing in life is free <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> nothing in life is free um it always a cost and the question is are you willing to pay that cost and if you're not willing to pay it then you know what you already know what that what that reality is but if you will take that chance and pay that cost then like you said um if you don't like i said if you don't if you're persistent if you learn and grow and try to be the best version of you and, and be a good person i can't stress that enough be a good person don't be mm-hmm. a, a shitty douchebag yeah, <laughs> so true. Don't, don't be a douchebag you know like i said we talk about karma Attraction. If you're, a, if you're an asshole, you're gonna attract a lot of asshole events and energy back to you. 
Mm-hmm. So be a good person. Like I always be like, I always tell people like, when you're good, when you're a good person, you do the right things, you work hard, and you uh, trust God, and you try to do things the right way. Life tends to work out for you. You know, it tends to work out for you. So, but uh, um, but we have come to a close. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for uh, we have come to the end of the podcast I really appreciate it for you taking the time we have some, a lot of great conversations out there um, I do want to ask one thing I do ask every guest at the end of the show I just want to ask you to share some final thoughts and some final words and then we'll end off the podcast with that so yeah just share, share some final thoughts and we'll wrap it up um, I guess the last thing I have <clears> to say <throat> is just like what you've been saying be you do you stay in your journey? Don't compare yourself to other people's journeys. Um, keep filling yourself up with, you know, positive affirmations, mindsets, um, everything is in your mind. So keep feeding yourself um, just good energy, good thoughts, good words. Um, and yeah, but one thing is don't worry about what other people are doing. Keep doing you, and keep focusing on you. And it's, it's your life and it's curated for you and for you to walk in it, so yeah.